I had my first burger from a restaurant yesterday. <laughs> Your first burger? Don't That's you, impressive. Don't you work in a restaurant? And doesn't the I, restaurant sell burgers? They they do. And I, I had to go there and I, I forgot how good food could taste. <laughs> <laughs> That food's pretty good. You're not just eating to survive, and you're actually eating to have a good time. I, I, it's one of those things. It's like, I'm, you know, it's got bacon. It was perfect. They burnt it just a little bit because I asked them to burn it a little bit. It was fantastic. <laughs> and I, it's, and someone's gonna ask, what the fuck does this have to do with anything? I'm just saying. Hello, everyone. Now the important question is to ask, did you, how did you order your burger? Like, how'd you cook your burger? Uh, you know, if you go, if you don't go to McDonald's or Burger King, they'll just slap shit on it. I like my burger a little more well done. I like to have the little bit of the char of it. I know some yeah. people like theirs a little chewy. I know, That's you know, me. a little medium well. I know some, some people, people like theirs like the like their medium. I could eat a burger anyway, but if someone says I will cook you a burger. Whatever the fuck you want, I'm like, okay, I need you to, and they have timers, so make it well done, but cook it over a minute. It was perfect. Maybe to you, you probably go, like, that burger's ruined, dumbass. But there's the. <laughs> but if I'm not gonna it... shame people how they eat their burger. I I, I have my burger medium rare because I like the chewy texture and I like the taste of the meat better when it's rare. I I, I just like things. I mean, look, if someone gave me a medium a medium rare or a medium steak. I work in a steakhouse. Of course I'm going to eat it. Duh. You're not going to just go like, hey, how dare you? Because a <laughs> lot of people like their steak medium. I like my shit burned to a crisp. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You're my man. Yeah. You're my yeah. man. My I mean, man. man. If they ask me, it like, how part. do I like it done? I'm like, burn it to it. Like, burn the shit out of it. Oh, I am all about that. I love when it's just a little bit burnt. You can just taste the little burnness of it. It's 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 like a little slice of heaven, but it's, some people just don't understand that, and that's fine. I, I yeah. really do understand that people don't understand that, but oh man. I'm one of those people. I don't understand it. I like the taste of the meat, not the burnt taste. No, no, no. I understand. I understand. You know, look, look. The real way how to eat a burger is not the way we're describing. <laughs> just want to just tell you, this is not the way you do things. They what? do not like. They do not like when you tell them to well done. They they do not like it. They want you to have it a little bit like medium well or just a little under well done. Well, then they shouldn't ask me then. They should just make it how the their establishment makes they, it. <laughs> they asked you because it's your burger. <laughs> I actually just ordered but it. There are um, some people that are like really snobby about it and they'll be like, oh, you like your food? You like your steak well done? I guess you must not like food then. <laughs> but I love food. <laughs> I ordered a sandwich uh, from the from the Fat Shack, like a local restaurant around here. And um, they just make, as the name suggests, really fucking disgusting burgers and sandwiches and shit. Mm -hmm. Um so the one I got has chicken fingers on it, uh, oh, mozzarella God. sticks. They're like in the sandwich? <laughs> yeah, on the sandwich. Chicken fingers, mozzarella sticks, uh, french fries, and marinara sauce. Um, they also make one, they, they make a good one that has um, uh, mac and cheese on it, uh, onion rings, uh, fries. They put fries and onion rings on like, and chicken fingers on like all their shit. Like I'm like looking sauce. at their menu and I'm like drooling right now. Holy shit! It's 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 great. <laughs> it it's looks great. like it looks like something you would get from the itis. This will kill you. Like I'm looking at this sandwich and it's got like French fries, uh, chicken fingers, lettuce, uh, ranch, and buffalo sauce, and I'm like, fuck! I am can all I, about that. Can I say <laughs> I love their logo? It is so adorbs. Is this place like only in Denver? Um, I don't. I problem. think. I think so. But they're trying. They're uh, trying to branch out. You can like uh, franchise. There's one. There's one in Colorado, Illinois, Kansas, and PA, Tennessee, yeah. Texas, and Washington. Uh, ooh, <sighs> I gotta in, drive a ways out in, then if I want to go. Ooh, they're in Philly. They're in Philly. They're in University City. We can. Yeah, they make, we can go they do to cheesesteaks. We can. Uh, 
we can go to the happy house of happiness. Did you see that logo? That that logo looked very happy. I'm in Arizona, so I got to drive all the way to Colorado if I want to try this. I was just in Colorado like two years ago. I didn't know that place existed. Or you could come near me and we can go to the one in Philly. It's <laughs> not a bad idea. Let's just make like a like a retro or uh, game of trip to Philly. Yeah. Fat yeah. And then be upset when we notice like it was a dumb idea to drive across the country to and try then, like one fast food chain. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then what's all oh, bad. I heard stories about Amberlynn taking going all the way to Cheesecake Factory all the way in Lexington, Kentucky. Take her fat friends and just say like, hey, we got to go to Cheesecake Factory. They open at eight. So I've heard I heard fat stories of people who are like, hey, man, I heard about this this happy logo place. I'll buy you the food. You drive. Let's do this. <laughs> It happens, man. The the yeah. uh, the uh, appetite monster comes for you. I haven't been like I haven't been eating for pleasure, like we like you mentioned before. Like I've just been here's okay. Here's what I've been doing. I don't know if I mentioned this actually on like a previous. <laughs> You're eating for survival. <laughs> I was only eating. I was eating for survival for the longest time, but but now I'm like, no, I can't anymore. So like, what I what I was doing was I was going to the um. I was going to the supermarkets in the rich neighborhoods. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, oh, you told us about that, yeah. <laughs> I told you that. And I, and I would go to their used bread or their old bread section, like their day-old bread. And fucking, you just have the, the pick of the litter because rich people <laughs> don't. <laughs> rich people don't want to eat old bread, even if it's, like, completely good. So, 50 cents for, like, a like whole loaves of bread. I'm like, hey, all I need is bread and water. Survival. <laughs> oh, my God. Were you in prison? <laughs> Hey, Here's I the way save. I see it, man. <laughs> well, you, you have a finite time on this earth, which means you have a finite amount of meals you're going to eat. So you might as well make like most of them good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was I'm, more I'm, about like trying to save money than, yeah. <laughs> than trying to like survive or whatever. No, I but. hear you. Yeah. That's, that's why like I like to cook because I can kind of make my food the way I want it. It's really good. I don't have yeah. any complaints on my cooking. Like if I make it myself, there's no complaints to it. It just takes more time. And a lot of people I understand don't have the time to cook. Yeah. Is this fact check open really late? Yeah. Sometimes I get, you know, a little late, late night meal like, from them. Like four, in, like four in the morning late. Like how late are we talking here? I don't know. I've only like, I've only hit them up at like midnight. That's not late enough. Yeah. I mean, that's late enough for, like, the average person. Most, not us, most I guess. Stuff's not, I'm most talking, stuff's not open late. When I talk late night, I'm talking 3 to 4 a.m. <laughs> oh, man. Sometimes the binge monster comes out, and you're like, fuck, I need something. Real talk, what? I'm going to make these fucking sandwiches. Like, I'm looking at these. I'm going to make these. You make I like those the sandwiches. One, the, the mac and cheese one is probably my favorite. God damn, This looks delicious. We say as we talk about food on a video game podcast, but I don't give a fuck. Like hey, you food. know what? You know what? Food, gaming, wrestling, gaming, everything goes with gaming, man. Food. I'm a simple man, dude. I like food and I like video games. Hey, like, hey man, we're all simple people here. You know, we drive a Honda. We go to the, <laughs> we go to the Outback or wherever you go. You order your food. They bring it out to you. You go home and then you think about about Min Min and and Smash Brothers, and it's all good, man. That's what I do God, these every day. Burgers look delicious. Oh my god! Or you go to Fat Shack, and after after a night of of slamming the controller down in frustration over Salt and Sanctuary, you go get yourself a nice little burger. You sit on the couch and you think about life, and you go like, "Man, this is good. When's life gonna go back to normal?" <laughs> and then you look, yeah. and then you look at the news. You're like, "Ah, fuck." Yeah, it's not gonna go back to normal for a while. Side note. I got my dog fixed the other day. Uh oh, was it broken? And no, like fixed. What, what operating system did he put in it? Jesus Christ! Uh, oh, you mean you, they chopped off his balls? I mean, it's a her, but they essentially, chopped her balls off. Yeah, they took out her lady balls, oh. and uh, now she's walking around with this cone. Great. And I feel bad, but it's like the funniest goddamn thing in the world. Watch your yeah, you, should, you should tape it. Well, <laughs> because oh, like. So she was never like the most graceful dog 
And it's so much worse now. She's got this phone, this like cone sticking out like three feet from her head. So she just bumps into stuff. She knocks stuff over. It's like, and Poor she doesn't dog. care. She's a dog. So it's like, whatever. Like she's not upset by it. She just like bump into stuff and she just keeps going like nothing happened. It's, it's awesome. I love this dog. Well, that's good. I'm glad your dog is better now and not having we you know what i don't think i ever had a girl animal in a while and if we did we never fixed them for reasons i don't know well there's like a lot of health benefits to it like i i know but found out with the vet like because i was like i'm not gonna have my dog around other dogs so what's the problem and there's a lot of like health benefits um lower risks of like urinary tract infections is a big one um oh god there's a bunch of other things like there's, there's a lot of like health benefits to fixing your dog outside of like them never having to get pregnant same with male dogs too yeah well yeah male dogs got those balls they need to go yeah. they don't look right <laughs> <laughs> they just they just stand there and it's like why why do you have these okay whatever dog all right sorry i'm off into a little tangent games that's what we play here lots of it we don't just pretend to play games. We play them. <laughs> um, so what games have you guys been playing? I know there's been a lot of sales going on right now with Steam and uh, PlayStation. So anything you guys picked up? Anything you guys are playing now? Uh, should we start with Wasabi? He said he played some stuff. Um, sure. I uh, I started a second playthrough of The Last of Us Part 2. All right. What have you um, learned? So really quick before we continue, I haven't played it yet. I yeah, haven't. Yeah. I've been trying to stay away from spoilers as much as possible. But can I'm you not... tell me, as spoiler free as possible, why the internet fucking hates this game right now? I'll Let's tell be... you why. Is because okay. no, it's not it at all. Well, there's a I, there is a, unfortunately like a small section of the internet that just is homophobic and Who that loved, bothers them. But that has like nothing to do with the game. It's it's people who want the story their way, and um, the way the story, everything that happens in the story, that it, it happens um, on purpose. There's like nothing that happens in the game that's like, oh, I didn't think people like it. It wants people. It wants to piss people off, and that's, that's what's happening. But I don't think, I don't think they. Um, I don't think they anticipated how people would be pissed off or why people would be pissed off because people were pissed off at some stupid shit. Basically, the that, the, that the story is not what they want to happen, so it sucks, pretty much. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Cause I was like, are people pissed that like, it's a female lesbian that's the main character now? Is the internet no. going to be mad at that? Or like, what's it's the deal? I'm not going to get into it. It's a lot more than that, but let's just stick to what Swabby said. Yeah. But okay. but the other but the other problem is that those leaks came out and they were extremely misleading. So people had already oh. made up their mind about like what the game's doing this, fuck this game, zero zero zero, and they're, they're, that that shit is so misleading because there's a lot of subtext and and you, you just don't get a lot of information that you need to have in order to. <laughs> To, okay. Yeah. Like form so, an opinion. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then okay. and then and then it's like, you know, it's YouTubers and people who play the game for like two hours, and then come across like come across <laughs> certain parts of the story, and they're like, "Oh, this is bullshit." I'm gonna write a fucking twenty minute YouTube video rant about fucking how this sucks, and you only played two three hours of it, and I'm like, dude, what the fuck, like. Play the game and then talk about it, or do your rant videos or whatever the fuck. Um, also, I think the internet just wanted to hate on it, just to hate on it. Be you know, sometimes they get in their minds like, "I'm gonna hate this." Yeah, it's that too. Okay. Um, the game but, is genuinely oh, fucking good. Yeah, like, I was gonna say great. if we're starting a second playthrough, like that I got, a, game. I got a question. Will this get the Death Stranding treatment <laughs> later? What's the Death Stranding treatment? How? That game came. People were confused. It, it was kind of. It was kind of good. wasn't bad. And then it just kind of faded away. 
That well, the problem with Death Stranding is that Death Stranding is a bad game. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Last of Us Two is very much not a bad game. So, like, but the problem with De- uh, the problem with Last of Us Two that they're seeing now is um, there's no replayability. So, like, it doesn't have the multiplayer mode. They didn't announce any like DLC plans or anything like that. So, once you finish it, people are just selling their games now. And now they're seeing like a huge decrease in sales because yeah, people played it, enjoyed it, or hated it, and now well, they're just selling it. Well, you know, it's like the hate mob of the internet. They bought into the hate mob of other people hating it. Yeah, I saw those articles up, you know, on uh, it was Australia, and I'm like, we don't live in Australia. Fuck them. <laughs> I mean, we we live in hellhole USA. Bing, bing, whatever. They get to go to bars and shit because they're responsible. That that's what I'm waiting on. I'm waiting on like the game to go on sale or something, or like pick it up like used. Because I know like I'm gonna love that game, but I'm only gonna play through it like probably once or twice. Yeah, I I feel like that game once it gets to forty, I'm like, all right, I can dive into that. You know? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. someone would go like, hey, you want to buy this copy for forty? Well, you damn yeah. right. Nothing against the game. I just I don't pay full price for games anymore. But, but also, if you wait just a tiny bit, sometimes the game will come down in price anyway. Well, the thing I, that's got me fucked up is that like this is probably the the biggest, most anticipated game this year. So how how far away? How long can I wait it out without getting it spoiled for me? You know. What also, I mean? also, this is not a spoiler. Some people were kind of mad. Uh, you know, Jim Sterling brought it up. I know that fat son of a bitch. Uh, nothing wrong with him. But it, he said that the length of the game was too long. Really? Too long? It's... Isn't he always like complaining about how like games need to have more value in them and how developers just have nickel and diming people yes, and yeah. now he's like complaining it's too long? No, not just him. I'm just saying like that game could have ended on other notes and. You know, some people are like, oh, it's too long or it's too, you know, like people complain when a game's eight hours and $60 and they're like, it's too short what the hell. Uh, it's a long game. But like I said, everything that they did in that game is intentional, even down to like the length of it. Yeah, um, it, it's one of those things. It's like it'll be interesting to see like a director's cut. We're not. It's just that game is that game. And then they kind of open the door go like we would like to do a less of us three and we're like i bet you do i bet you think about it every day neil i bet you think about it and you sleep with it every night i don't know i don't know about that but see it'll make them like i don't know i i, I either way that this game is like it's the best it's the best video game that naughty dogs ever made like playing it is the best it's fucking so satisfying yeah that is doesn't matter that's a pretty big statement. Okay, I'll check it out then. I'll check, I'll check my local like Facebook marketplace, see if anyone's already beat it and they're selling it for like forty. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you'll find people on your Facebook marketplace to sell it for forty dollars or Amazon. I'm sure. Yeah, but yeah, I've been I've been thinking about that game like almost every day. Oh yeah. Um, just yeah. <laughs> Um, like watching like interviews with uh, there's a good kind of funny. He has a good interview with um, he has Neil Druckmann on and Ashley oh, Johnson. Oh, good, someone. Did it. Oh, good, someone Baker. Did yeah, yeah, yeah. He brought he brought them all in. And just had like just asked him everything. So what is about... with him getting everyone? He can just get anyone a dime of a hat. Well, he's uh, he's Greg Miller. He is fucking everywhere and at a dime of a hat. That dude's got some contacts, man. He's been in the game for a while, so no, no, I'm not surprised he's got some contacts. No, 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 not at all. I'm just saying, like, anywhere I turn, there's Greg Miller. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, these days, I turn around, it's like, Greg Miller. I turn this way, Greg Miller. Just, that dude's working. Can't blame but him. Yeah, I'm just saying, you, he's working. If you, if you want to see some, like, good context for how like what went into making that game um hearing uh ashley and troy baker talk about um 
just what went into like creating some of their performances and that shit, I'm like, I started like tearing up, man, because they they really have to bring them. I don't know what the fuck that is. That's they, uh, that's they, the vacuum cleaner. Why are you Jesus. running a vacuum cleaner? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, you know, you got to clean out the uh, the cobwebs down there. You know, girls like that kind of stuff. You know. But like hear, hearing them talk about their performances, you can tell that they like had to bring themselves to like some really dark fucking places. Um, and it just it it just shows in the game, and then when they're talking about it, it's like hard for them to even talk about. Um, it's it's like, well, it's funny you bring that up because like I used to be in the mindset that gameplay is more important than story. And I still kind of am, but I used to be like, I don't need my story. I don't need a story in my game. I'm just here for the gameplay, but it's kind of shifted more to story now. I got a question, Rick. Was there ever a porno that you were ever engrossed in story-wise? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, when I was a kid, I watched a Spider-Man porno parody and I was into it because I love Spider-Man. That's all about right. it. <laughs> that's a, that's kind of how I feel about games. It's like if the you know like all right if the gameplay if the story is better than the gameplay and it's like if the sex is better than this than the story of this porn then we all win. But it well, depends. here's it, here's my mm. here's my thing though. Like, yes, you're playing a game to play a game, but the story is like that context that helps you propel the game forward, gives you a reason to keep coming back. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like stories aren't important. I used to have that mindset, but that's definitely not it right now. Like a, a good story definitely helps push a game from like a B to like an A. But also, not every game needs a story. Check out NBA 2K18 when Spike Lee wrote that story. I heard the story's pretty good for that, though. <laughs> like, it's it's right, man. Yeah, it's I, I heard talking aside, it's like... It could work as like a legit like Spike Lee movie. <laughs> I'm just um, saying. My, my thing about story is that um, a lot of people, it, it's hard to make this connection, but it, it's so true with like Naughty Dog games specifically is that you can tell your story through your gameplay. And that's something that Naughty Dog is extremely good at. Like they're good at just not even they're good at showing they're good at showing you and not telling you like they don't have to say shit they don't have to come out and say oh this character is fucking this because they did this this and this like they'd rather just show you and then you can or just you play the game and you're like oh I can see you know I can look at this environment and see what's happening and and I don't have it doesn't have to tell me this like to my face like there's a lot of subtext that can happen through gameplay it's like um like outer wilds one of my favorite games of all time uh on sale on steam right now uh less than 10 bucks but you can play that game and that game is completely told through the gameplay or the story is completely told through the gameplay there's not a single line of there's not a single cutscene, not a single line of dialogue you never get any new weapons or equipment or anything it's just you exploring seeing the world and going oh holy shit this is what's happening and holy shit this is happening because this happened and you just you're just yeah. exploring and making these connections and it's all through gameplay i hear you and I, i'm the same way like i like when my stories i i like when i'm not watching a movie you know i want my story to like help supplement the gameplay if there's a way to combine gameplay and story i like to see that in my games like I, I know it's been talked to death but like undertale does a great job of that like that's a perfect story example yeah. of a, of a yes. game that only works as a game you know like like if someone tells you like like i know there's like talks about like a last of us tv series like that could work you know you can make a tv series on pretty much most video games but if someone told me like oh they're gonna make like an undertale movie like how is that gonna work you know what i mean like there's a part of it that would be lost if you transition it from a game to like anything else yeah. Because the, the because the the game and story are like integral to each other, and I, I like to see games do that. And it sounds like from what you're describing, Last of Us does do that really well. Like you're playing through the story, you're not watching the story. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of watching. I think there's like yeah, like I bet there's a lot of watching still. But if it's like integrated to the gameplay 
in a way that makes you like feel like what you're going through then i think yeah. that'll work and this is coming completely based on like what you're saying i haven't i haven't touched the game yet i've stayed away from most trailers most announcements i want to go into this game as clean as possible which I, as i say that people are like already gonna like start iming me like spoilers and stuff so i probably shouldn't have admitted that <laughs> but oh well <laughs> they're not gonna im you no one listens yeah. people's gonna be like oh what he's looking forward to something i better fuck it up for him <laughs> Well, unless you're going to D Live or any of the other places, then they will fuck it up for you. Dude, I have stayed away from like Reddit, 4chan. Like right. I if am you, staying away if, from like everything right now. If you stay away from those those especially D Live and Bitwave and all those yeah. people because they're pro asshole, uh, you'll be fine. Yeah, I've been staying away from you know, and every time like a, a video pops up for Last of Us on my YouTube channel, I'll like delist it. I'll mark it like not to show me Last of Us Two content. Like I'm, I'm trying to stay away from this as much as possible. But it's getting harder and harder every day, man. I just have to bite the bullet. Well, it's not even that. It. People are still the the tiki torches haven't gone out on that game. Yeah, they still they still are they still want Neil Druckmann's ass. <laughs> But no, so Last of Us is good then. You recommend it? Last of Us 2? I recommend it on like a sale or a discount or get it used. Yeah. Uh, I feel like this is the time to get it used. So, you know, if anyone has a used copy of The Last of Us 2 that doesn't have scissor holes in it, uh, hit me up. <laughs> if people are like throwing their copies in the fire and like fucking cutting them in half, I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like anyone who comes out and says this game is trash is fucking clickbaiting and fucking like it is far hey, from man, any. It it works for YouTube. Have you noticed YouTube? Sure. Is clickbait trash. I was gonna say, sure. dude. Like I've played fucking trash games and like like this goes back to like Mass Effect Andromeda. Like people are giving it like ones and zeros. And I'm like, have you fucking played a one or a zero game before? No. Because no, Andromeda is like a solid like six. Yeah, but it, you know how these people are. They yeah. they think a six is trash. They think a seven's trash. Anything above an eight, it's like, oh, this game's good, but it has these problems. Ha ha. I I just don't. I'm not a fan of like the numbered systems. Um, I'm not either. Well, numbers are like subjective. Like you can talk to someone. I give you an example. Like my dad, for example fucking hates doom because he doesn't like having to be aggressive but he likes wolfenstein because it lets him sneak around so like you know versus someone who like like me or you who like doom because that's the fucking point to just go in and rip and tear yeah you know if you assign a number to it you you doubt it and that, that's why i think it's important for like if you're going to review a game it's okay to put a number in it but make sure like who you're reviewing it to knows like what you're into and why you gave it the number you did that way somebody can form an opinion based on, oh, well, if these are things that are bugging him, maybe I can look past it. Or things he doesn't like, I might like. You know what I mean? I think numbers, like, work if the scale made sense. But this yeah. thing where, like, anything below an eight is trash is, like, fucking ridiculous. But yeah, also... Especially... Well, what's that? Oh, sorry. Also, reviews are an old-school gamer thing. Uh, no, it's still yeah. a thing, but it's you know, if you were alive when GameStop was GameSpot was the was the place or IGN, you would look at you know you would take that score, and that would be the gospel. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you, everything gets review scores. Like movies get scores, and music gets scores and shit. You know what? Just you know what? I I I learned a long time ago. I don't fucking care for movie scores. It just seems like people just say, best movie ever, I just watch it. I'm like, I don't want to know about your stupid opinion because it's always jaded. Like, the Avengers thing was like, greatest movie ever, everyone go go see it. I'm like, I'll go see it. But if I, I don't want to suck his dick for, for sucking dick, sir, I just want to go see it. Well, the thing is, like, movies are a lot less of an investment, like, money-wise and time-wise, like, both. So you can you can spend the ten bucks to watch a movie and not feel even if it's bad you're like oh I mean this is bad but fuck it 
whereas if you dump 60 bucks on a shitty game, you're like, oh, fuck. What's the return yeah, but, policy on PSN? <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, but, like, I would argue that it's easier now more than ever to, like, know what you're getting into with a game because now, you know, like, me, for example, I follow a bunch of YouTubers. Like, I'll listen to... Uh, I watch uh, G Man Lives to talk about like first person shooters, yeah. what I should look out for in a shooter. I'll listen to uh, Sphere Hunter to talk about like survival horror games or Resident Evil games that come out. So, you know, like I have like a reviewer, quote unquote, for like every style of game I'm into. But that's like, that's like you and me know these, these outlets because like we're in it, like we do this. Yeah. But I feel like for the normal consumer who wants to know if The Last of Us 2 was good. They're gonna see a bunch of fucking threes and zeros, and they'd be like, "Oh, this game fucking sucks." Or they're gonna see their favorite YouTuber like PewDiePie, fucking breaking his copy and going, "This game sucks." Like it's it's, I feel like the average consumer doesn't isn't looking for this for this stuff. Well, that's the YouTube mentality, you know. For you know, if you're going to it, the person that praises this game or is going to be called a left wing a hole. And for the people that like this game, will you know, like uh, or hate this game, will will seem like heroes. Oh, that's ridiculous. Anyway, point I'm gonna, is, uh, I'm going to pick up Last of Us Two eventually, and uh, I guess if you're listening, if you can take anything away from this, I guess just take reviews with a grain of salt. <laughs> always take everything with a grain of salt, and it's just one of those things. Is the narrative with Sony has been you can't control it anymore you lost the pr war yeah we'll have to wait and see i mean the game's doing well so it's not like these uh, uh it's, it's not like uh these troll reviews are like fucking with the game sales or anything well it never does those people i i never thought like oh my god these people being mad will you know they bought it's like the left for it's like left for dead too on pc remember that game came oh, out a year after now. shit on it yeah and yeah, everyone like i'm not gonna play that i'm left for dead and then you, you see this list of people not playing it and they play it it's like yeah yeah i i never believe gamers when they say things ever other than last of us I know with some sales going on, anyone pick up anything new or anything I, fun? I played, uh, I played the SpongeBob Battle for Bikini Bottom. Uh, get your fucking swim fan hydrated edition. <laughs> Did you really buy that like rehydrated edition or whatever? I I was thirsty, man. I was I was in the I was in bed. I was I I needed a cup of water and it fell in my lap. I'm like, oh cool. Now I can be refreshed. So I've never played the SpongeBob like platformer, the Battle for Bikini Bottom game. I never played it when I was a kid. Would you say it's worth going into now, even if you have like no nostalgia for it? <laughs> I'll tell you this: How much is it a solid platformer? It is a solid. It's 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 a little below average solid platformer. Like say, like if you're a kid, if you put on the nostalgia goggles, you would think this game's great because. It's like it's cheap, and you're like, "Oh, look!" And it's functional. The game's not broken by any means, but you know what I mean. It's like people people remember it a little fondly because it's not complete tire fire of a game. But see, it definitely the, has some jank to it. That that's what I was told. I mean, it's an old like licensed game from like a gener like two generations ago. Like I'm not surprised there's some jank to it. But, I mean, sometimes that jank is, like, part of the appeal, man. Oh, no, no, no. It's just some of it is just – it's not even like, oh, my God, old old platformer. It's it's a collect-a-thon game. Oh, yeah. So it, it's, it, it's from a time where people, like, like those banjo games where you go around platforming and fighting golden spatulas, the next, the next thing open. I don't like collect-a-thons. I mean, define like collectathon because like I played banjo when I was a kid. You know how Super Mario sixty four, you get the stars and you go on to yeah. the next. It's that basically. But how is that different from like Super Mario Odyssey, which is like fucking awesome? Uh, Super Mario Odyssey is a little bit more open, and you can go anywhere basically. And they have you have cool, and it tells you I think, okay. I think like Super Mario sixty four is like the least. Uh, is like the least extreme. Whereas Banjo Kazooie is like the most extreme, 
Because in Super Mario 64, you're just collecting coins like you normally do, and you're collecting stars. But in Banjo, it's like Jinjos, Jiggies, uh, Notes, uh, Mumbo Tokens, Eggs, uh, Feathers, Golden Feathers. <laughs> yeah. Like, I think when people say collect a thon, they're talking about that kind of extreme. Okay, also, like, 64. We're like, also, yeah, each one has to yeah. fuck up bananas. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah, those bananas were fucking crazy. Uh, and also, you have to collect socks. You have to collect these shiny things. You have to collect uh, SpongeBob underwear. And it's no, I'm not kidding about that one. It's so not like collect. So I guess a collectathon isn't like, oh, I'm collecting stuff that makes a collectathon. It's like, oh, I'm collecting a shit ton of stuff. Yeah, like, you're collecting yeah. a shit ton of. So shit. like, where Odyssey is like, oh, like there's some coins and like some special moons you're getting. But with this, it's it's like a whole like laundry list of like different collectibles that are all tracked differently. Yeah, you have to go find it, and they tell you like, "All right, go do this, and I'll give you a golden spatula." And in my mind, I'm like, "Why don't you just give me the fucking spatula? Like, why do you fucking have this spatula? Why why are you teasing me with this fucking thing?" And then Patrick goes like, "Oh, hello everyone! I got a golden spatula, SpongeBob, but I'm not gonna give it to you unless you shove this up your ass." You're like, "I'm on it, Patrick." It's like, what <laughs> the- <laughs> <laughs> it's like Patrick. Why don't you just give me the fucking spatula? Well, the game's good then. Game's all right, not broken. I'm I'm enjoying myself. Sandy's great. She says, "Don't mess with Texas." That's the thing about old games that these kind of games. The dialogue gets repetitive. Yeah. It gets repetitive. I don't know how many times I've heard SpongeBob go, You have, I'm the Spongeinator. Ha! You know, I'm like, oh, shut up. <laughs> Please shut the fuck up. Well, I'll definitely check it out then. I like platformers. I don't like it for a new platformer to play. Except for Sandy. Her, her stick doesn't get old. All she just says, Don't mess with Texas. Yeah. I had that game on GameCube. It was okay. Um, but I did uh, I did pick up in the Steam sale, I did pick up, finally, Red Dead Redemption 2. I saw you play that. Uh... I have uh, yet to play it, just because I, I was told it's the other side of the spectrum where the game focuses like too much on the story and not so much on gameplay. I like I love the whole thing it's doing, man. It's super slow paced, but it's kind of you. It earns it in a way, just because yeah. of the setting and the time and the and the whole like scenery. It's just a very calming, slow paced game. It's down on the range. Yeah, yeah. Like it just it it fits with the whole aesthetic. Uh. Yeah, I like it. Like those characters are super good. The dialogue's super good. Um, yeah, the game's phenomenal. I'll have to check it out then, because like it's still a little, little too much for me. I mean, like it's like what forty eight dollars, fifty dollars right now, so it's still a little. Yeah, but too it gets much five, is, you get five dollars off. I don't know if you ever already used it, but you get five dollars off for your. <laughs> yeah, so I got it for forty. Forty seems Ow. okay. I mean, that's the yeah. lowest that that's the lowest price that game's ever been on on PC. Yeah. So, yeah, that that seems good. Uh, what's I going to say? That game runs fantastic, right? Because they do a good job with their ports. Um, yeah, I can I can run it at four K, not maxed out, but I found a good sweet spot between like frame rate and graphics. Um, yeah, it runs it runs great. That's good. I picked up um, just a couple small games. I don't really get like big games on Steam anymore. I usually just buy a bunch of small ones, but well, because there's really no big games I'm like looking for on Steam. The last big game I bought. You get Outer Wilds. You know, it's like less than ten bucks right now. Is it really? (laughs) I might pick that up, dude. I'm telling you, Outer Wilds is like instantly became like my game of all time. Not all time. I mean, I have like some nostalgia trips with ocarina of time but like outer wilds is so fucking phenomenal it is it is 
Uh, it's like seventeen dollars right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, whatever. It's still worth it. Still worth it. That game is worth it at any price, to be honest. But <laughs> I'll look it up and I'll check it out. But I've picked up. Um, so a while ago, my brother-in-law got me Charlie Murder because it was on my wish list for a while. And that was the first like Scott Studios game I ever played, and I fucking loved it. So Charlie I bought Murder. It. Yeah, it's really good. Like if you like good beat 'em ups, Charlie Murder is one of my favorites. And I, after, because of that, I bought the rest of Scott Studios like library for Steam, which really only consists of like Dishwasher Smile and uh, Salt and Sanctuary. Dishwasher is good. Far in the hole was made. Really good. Dishwasher is really good. I really like that. Murder the the other one, and yeah. of course they made a game with zombies in it. See, that's not on Steam though, and I couldn't find it. I want to pick it up, but it's on there. But it's I on picked those up. Uh, Salt and Sanctuary is really good. I've dumped about two to three hours in it, and it's a really solid Dark Souls clone. But it's like a two D Metroidvania with like that Dark Souls like gameplay and style, and it's really really good. Holy shit, that game's so much fun. You can build your character any way you want. Each weapon plays like drastically different. I love it. I love it a lot. And I think everyone should go pick it up. That one's only like less than five dollars right now. Um I oh, also wow. oh wow. Yeah. The whole the whole the collection is eight dollars. It's it's really cheap, actually. Yeah, so pick that up. I mean, eight dollars, you get vampire smile, uh Charlie Murder, Salt and Sanctuary. They're really good. Um, I also picked up, um, I got an electric guitar a while ago, so I finally picked up Rocksmith. I'm going to get the adapter for that and play with that. Nice. Um, I've used Rocksmith. I've used Rocksmith before. I didn't, they want you to pay, they want you to buy all the individual songs and it's fucking fucked up. There's a, there's a site you can go to that you can, once you buy one song, I think it was like, I forget what song it was, but there's a song you can buy and then people make their own charts online and you can like mod new songs in for free. So see, I, like I bought Rocksmith more for like, cause um, I, I like, I've been playing guitar since I was like night 17, 18, but not consistently. Like I don't practice yeah. my scale as much as I used to. And I mainly got Rocksmith as like a way to like help me practice my scales in a way that's not just practicing my scales. You know what I mean? Yeah, because I know like it gamifies a lot of like the day to day guitar training you should do, and that that's what I got it for to help gamify that a little bit. Uh, that was only like eight dollars, so it wasn't expensive to pick up. Uh, the biggest one I got was the new South Park game, Fractured but Whole. That one's really good. Oh, uh, you! I, I picked that up for fourteen dollars. Not on the sale, just I have it in the collection. So yeah, so I picked it up on PS2 a while ago. About a year or two, or PS4, PS4, sorry, my bad. Uh, PS4 a while ago when it was uh, like $20 for the base game. I loaned it to a friend of mine, never got it back. And it was you like, forgot about it. yeah, I did forget about it. You forgot but, about it. Yeah, but now it's like, I think it's something like $20 and it's the gold edition. So you get all the DLC too. So I was like, fuck it, I'll double dip and pick up the gold edition on PC, like the platform I prefer to play on. And it's still good. I mean, it's a solid RPG. It's really funny. If you like South Park, it's definitely worth getting into. And my brother-in-law also got me Project Warlock. So I can't wait to download that. That one's been on my wish list forever. So I'm really happy I got that. I can't wait to play that. I'll probably play it after this uh, podcast, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I'm going to install the dishwasher and Vampire Smile and the whole Ska thing. I bought the whole Ska thing for eight bucks. <laughs> right on, man. I fucking love the dishwasher. I don't know. That game speaks to me in like weird ways. There's like, honestly, there's like a ton of games on Steam right now. So like, go check it out. But if you want my recommendation, the ones I picked up are worth looking into. I mean, the game's called Vampire Smile, but whatever. It just they're, it's, it's they're good. Fun, it's a fun game. It's a fun, stupid, violent, like 2D hack and slash platformer. It's super edgy, but like that's the kind of games like I we were talking about this earlier. Like if I was like fifteen making games, Scott Studios are like the exact kind of games I would have made if I was like fifteen years old. And there's something about that like kind of angsty appeal of those games that I really like. 
And at least Charlie Murder like doesn't take itself seriously like uh, Saint Salt and Sanctuary and Project and um, Vampire Smile do. Like those games take themselves way too seriously for how silly they can be. At least like Charlie Murder like knows it's kind of a silly game and it doubles down on it. But no, those are the games I'm playing. Um, also, we got a new uh, Diablo season coming out. I think it's starting like next week. Oh, no. You're going yeah. back in the Diabs. I am going back on the Diablo train, so that's going to be a thing. We'll never probably, see you again. I'll probably be talking about the newest season like next podcast. I haven't had time to like really look into what's happening. My buddy reminded me like, hey, new season next week. You're down. And I'm like, fucking homie, you know it. <laughs> because I, uh, okay. I have a problem. Well, that's. I'm glad that you have your. I have my Fortnite stuff. You have your your Diablos. <laughs> can I uh, can I say some games that people should buy on the Steam thing? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I didn't want it. This is this is going to be rapid fire. Yeah. Thumper, the Bambi game. Everyone loves Thumper. Buy that. <laughs> <laughs> buy the Bambi game. I'm Thumper. Uh, there is this game called Fit and Rage, Fight and Rage for six dollars. Looks fucking amazing and a little expensive, but the return of the Obra Din, $14.99. Pick that up. Also, GameStop, those they're still alive. They're doing uh what are they? They're doing like buy two, get one free. On yeah, I saw that earlier. I haven't shot the GameStop in a minute, but I mean, it's not bad for physical games. If there's a game you're looking for, you need a physical copy of it. Right. I'm just saying that if you are out there. Also, there's a sale There's a sale going on on memory cards and uh, Western Digital black stuff. So if you, I was eyeing up a hard drive, but I'm not buying the hard drive. <laughs> also, Forsaken is a free Twitch Prime game this week. Uh, this month, so that's cool. The future's forsaken. Forsaken 64. Speaking of Fortnite, what's this big update they're having now? Because, like... Oh, it's it's done. Okay, so, like, it's done, it's, done. Uh, it's not an early access anymore. It's finished, well, quoting. Well, thing is, it's sorry, not really... It's... Like, no, she hasn't gotten used to her uh, cone yet. So if you hear her bumping into stuff, that's that's her... <laughs> Um, it's not really an update. Uh, they're just taking the early access flag off of it and calling it, saying it's released now. Yay! Um, so it's not really a, a big. It's not really a big update. They're just they're pretty much saying, "Hey, uh, that's save the world mode. Uh, we're not. We're we're done with that." <laughs> Yeah, we uh we realize people want the battle royal mode. I'm like, yes, yes. So like, like realize. the single player mode that they started the game with, they're like, yeah, that's that's done. <laughs> We're not doing that no more. Yeah, yeah the one you gonna... had to buy, which they're still they came out and said, hey, you know, you had to buy it and you still have to buy it, but we're not gonna update it anymore. So fuck you. <laughs> I mean, it was only a matter of time, man. Like you know how I was really surprised. Uh, no. Uh, you know how I celebrated? How did you celebrate? You went and played I, Fortnite? I, I went and played. I, I turned it on, and I, there was this chick in there with short shorts, and I went like, epic, my man. I bought it. That's how I celebrated. I'm like, yeah. Gross. Bought me a new skin. Gross. Um, they said they're adding a new Ventures uh, seasonal thing to that mode. <laughs> uh, Funny. Don't really know what what that entails, but um, it entails that they kind of want you to care about what they're doing with the with. Yeah, but then they come out and say, "Hey, we're not updating anymore. Uh, any new cosmetics that come out are not going to work because <laughs> we're not going to update the get that mode to support the new skins." Uh, so it pretty much it seems like they're just dropping this and going to focus on the battle royale. But Man. instead of just dropping it with nothing, they're just going to go like, here you go. Yeah. Which is smart. You know, you don't want to tell people, hi, you know that mode you pay $40 for? Oh, yeah, it's dead. That shit was $40? Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> yeah, it was 40 Same Oh, my God. 
I, I bought that shit when it came out. Oh my god, that's awful. And then sometimes it comes for twenty. And then one time I got in it. I don't even know how I got in on Xbox. And I was playing it, and it ran like crap. It doesn't look like that hard a game. There's no reason for it to be running like shit. No, well, it hasn't been updated until now. Oh, that makes sense. I mean, I Fortnite did. gets a weekly update. That never got an update until, like, now. I thought it got, like, small updates because the whole, like, the UI is trash. Like, just yeah, navigating that... that game is fucking fucked. Like, there's yeah. so many different menus and fucking there's shit all over the place. Um, yeah, that's is... the menus <laughs> and there's a, and that game, then Fortnite changed so rapidly that it looks like a relic. So, like, I don't know if they ever updated that part of it, but um, that that is what needed the most updating. Um, there were, like, missions in it that you couldn't, you literally can't complete without help from other players. And finding other players to help you was damn near fucking impossible. So, like, no I've been, I've been, yeah, so I've been stuck on the same mission for literally, like, since that game came out. I've been stuck on one mission because I couldn't find anyone to help me. Uh yeah, it's it's. I, I'm gonna load it up today and see what it's like now. Hopefully, it's better, but I don't know. That sounds straight up awful. <laughs> it, it is oh awful. <laughs> I'd that, be pissed if I paid forty dollars for a game and the fucking free mode that was an afterthought's getting more love than the game I paid for. Well, that free mode is what made that game not disappear in the fucking ether. Yeah. I'll admit that. Like, that game was on its way out before the Battle Royale mode came out. That game but, was going to be a blip on the radar in out. But I don't know why they don't make the Save the World mode free. Like, why end your support and just still make people pay for it? I think I think because they they know that the thing's trash and they want to lock people out of it. They just get rid of it. I mean, yes, but, you know, I think the pride of it, you're like, but Fortnite's this. No, Fortnite's Battle Royale now. So I got to ask, are there any, like, benefits to the Battle Royale mode if you paid for the main game? No. Or are they totally separate entities? Like, you can't sure. even get, like, exclusive skins or well, anything. You get, you get V-Bucks for playing the Save the I, World. I wish I could just take the Save the World part out. Like, the the launcher is 80 gigs for Fortnite. The I just wish that I can just slim it down. Yeah, but they, they are giving, they said all paid founders will have their founders packs upgraded to the next level and unlock all the rewards included in the upgraded pack free courtesy of home base. Ultimate what edition owners will be granted the new metal team leader pack and 8,000 V bucks. 8,000. That's what it says. Holy shit! Not a lot. Yeah. I don't play Fortnite. <laughs> Do you know how many skins you could buy with that? Uh, eight thousand V bucks is about eighty bucks. Yeah, I mean, that's not cool. bad. You pay forty bucks for a game you're never gonna play, and you get eighty dollars of V bucks for a game you are gonna play. I mean, you can buy the new season pass and buy all the pretty uh, skins that, like I do. I'm so. Oh, never mind. I don't care. I just realized I don't care about I, 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 I know you don't care. Model. <laughs> but I do care about one thing. Fuck Aquaman. Wait, what? What's the significance of Aquaman? Is like an Aquaman skin? No, Aquaman flooded the, the, the map and he's there and everyone's like, we love you, Aquaman. We're like, we were making fun of this sack of shit for years. How did he become cool? Jason Momoa's playing him now, so that's probably has something to do with it. <laughs> Is that is that how it is? Everyone's making fun of like Aquaman sucks. Oh wow, you're hot. Well, here's the thing about Aquaman. Okay, and my my, my nerd's gonna show now. Good. Aquaman is fucking lame. Yay! Dot, dot, dot. Old school Aquaman is he lame. Is lame. You know, Super Friends Aquaman is lame. Yeah. But like my generation, the Justice League Aquaman is a fucking badass. Okay. Like Aquaman is a badass now, and and, and it's kind of hard to like shed off that like lame pussy fish part persona that he got from from the original like Super Friends cartoon or the original uh, Justice League cartoon from like the seventies. 
So I'll admit that. Like that, that did not do Aquaman any favors. And that fucking costume, even for like old school comic standard, that costume was fucking ridiculous. So like that, that's what started this whole thing. But like new generation Aquaman, like mid 2000s Justice League Aquaman is fucking awesome. He's cool as shit. He has some of the best stories in that cartoon. And it, I think it's cool that he's like getting this recognition now. And all it took was like Jason Momoa like playing him so he can cast off this like shitty look that he's gotten for the past like two decades. All right. All right. All right. I just want to say <laughs> I, I remember shitty Aquaman. Yeah. I I grew up with shitty Aquaman and people go like Aquaman's cool. It's a little weird because I'm like that son of a bitch. He's cool now. He's shit. Yeah. He's cool now, but I'll admit like everyone else is like interpretation of Aquaman, which most of the people making the jokes, I grew up with like old orange spandex Aquaman. So I get it, (laughs) but Aquaman's kind of a badass. Well, if he's badass now with his Triton and all that stuff, then I, I guess I can give Aquaman a try. He's like, in, the- in my opinion, the best interpretation of him is probably like is it, 2000 Justice League. Is it fucking crazy there's Deadpool and Aquaman in a game? I mean, didn't they have Thanos in that same game like last year? They sure did have Thanos in the same game last year. With the Infinity Gauntlet. So is that just like what Fortnite is now? Just a bunch of pop culture references, like mixed in with skins and stuff. Kind of, it really is kind of that. Yeah, dude. Trying to I mean, that's off. like that's like old school, like MMO, like other world, like Gaia Online shit that they're doing right now. Except for based in reality, which is crazy. I mean, as based in reality as a video game can be, but yeah. I mean, things happen. <laughs> like Travis Scott grows to be fucking 40 feet tall and yeah, i heard about that like he has like that, that's so weird to me like i mean okay man i'm not gonna shit on someone else's good time but i'm like i think i'm just too old for fortnite is my thing i'm just gonna say this if you go to that thing they give you a fucking roller coaster to glide on <laughs> and that thing's amazing and they call it the astro cart that thing's amazing <laughs> Hey, that was yeah. Fortnite hour. Uh... <laughs> it's not everyone. Hour. It is. It is no longer beta. <laughs> it's no longer early access. The game is out. It will win game of the year. No, it won't. No, it won't. Not at all. It did win game of the year, like what, 2018? Though, right? <laughs> like that was a thing. <laughs> sure, he was nominated. Sure, it was. A lot of people game were pissed about it. Like, how's a fucking. Because, like, how is a fucking game in early access that's not even finished yet, like, getting nominated? But whatever. Game's finished now, everyone. Well, it was I'm only because it was only because they had that tag on it that said it was early access. I mean, they could have just as well been like, well, what they're doing now is just, they're just removing the tag and just saying, oh, this is released, but not they didn't really update anything. They just so. they 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 had their pat they had their patch Tuesday that they always come out they come out with a patch either Tuesday Wednesday or Thursday. It astounds me that Fortnite, which is literally like a game of following trends, it was when it started. It was trying to follow that crafting survival game trend, and they updated it with that battle royale trend to compete with uh, battlegrounds. PUBG. PUBG. Yeah, PUBG. And even now, it's just a bunch of pop culture trends and references is like still super popular. But see, they they hit they hit like the perfect storm of they had the perfect yeah. timing. They had they had the cross play, um, and it was free. Um, like they just had the perfect storm, a combination of shit that that nailed it. Where like if PUBG came out and it was on mobile and it was free and. If it did all that shit, it would have. It probably be in in Fortnite spot. Fortnite was free, but PUBG also Fortnite. Bucks. Fortnite also, I think I I like the aesthetic of Fortnite. Also, also Fortnite runs way better on most machines. PUBG ran like shit. It's better yeah. now, but back in the day, you had to find the magic computer to play PUBG perfectly. 
Oh, that was another game that was like an early access, right? Yeah, and people yeah. loved like, it. In love with. And then it came out. Jeff Gersman gave gave it game of the year, and then it died. All right. Um, I still prefer PUBG over Fortnite. Yeah, I well, prefer most perspective. Over Fortnite. Like Apex is better than Fortnite too. <laughs> But it's just like they, they don't have like it's not on you can't play with like everything. It's not on mobile. It's not, you know, like Fortnite just came out and was like, no, let's just get this to as many people as possible and just let them play it. I'm just going to say would... this. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. You no, go. Continue. No, you go. When I was still at Best Buy, I guess Fortnite had this like promotion. If you like played a game of Fortnite on some new phone that had come out you get like an exclusive skin and we were getting people coming in all the time logging into their fortnite account on our display phone and playing around so they can get that skin it was ridiculous mm. yeah i have the i have the clout man that's uh you know it's drip a drown out I, here man oh, i i stopped playing apex uh legends when they had that guy come in and they shot that girl in there i'm like i'm out fuck this game why are you showing me the story of this asshole? I don't even want to buy it. I installed it. I was so pissed. So like, what the fuck? They're having a nice dinner, and this guy comes in and shoots everyone up. Makes me really want to play the game now. I don't know what the fuck? I don't even know what the fuck you're talking about. But <laughs> last someone season, shot someone. Last season, they had a cinematic. It was you know, and to introduce their new character. And he, you know, everyone's having dinner. It's a nice little night. And then here comes this sack of shit, and he just murdered. And I'm like, oh my god, what the fuck? I uninstalled the game. Well, like, I can't play this. I can't play this. I can't play this. I can't play this. What the fuck? Oh. It's those little things that piss me. I'm like, why? Why do you have to show this cinematic of this of like that? Why can't you just go, this guy's out, go play it. It doesn't matter! It's not like there's no fucking dinners in the, the, the fucking map. And no one's going, hmm, yes, let's have dinner. Oh, look! There's a bad guy over there. Let's ping him. Well, sorry that affected you so badly. <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, I don't know how to news. respond to that. <laughs> In other news, uh, PlayStation Plus, they announced the free games for July. Um, and, uh, yeah, you get uh, NBA 2K20. You get Rise of the Tomb Raider. And a bonus game, Erica. Yay. Which I checked out, Erica. And it looks pretty interesting, like a point-and-click, like, FMV game. Well, I can tell you that it's not interesting. (laughs) Really? I can tell you that it's not interesting at all. That game is fucking trash. (laughs) Uh, I bought that game. But her name is Erica. I bought that game when it came out because they announced it on, like, PSX or some shit. And was like, oh, this looks looks interesting. Uh, Bought it the day it came out, streamed it here in its entirety. And that game is fucking trash, dude. That game sucks. Uh, uh, bad. It's a bad game. Bonus game? No. Bad game. Uh, bad. It's bad. It's terrible. Uh, well, it's free, and that's all you can say about that. It's free, so grab it and hate it. Um, yeah, grab it and hate it and laugh at yourself. I mean, it's free, so I don't mind it. I am excited for... Um... Tomb Raider, though, I've been that game has been on my list forever, and I, I, I kept meaning to buy it every time I see it on sale. So it's good that I don't have to now. Tomb Raider's <laughs> great. The thing about that game that's weird is it fucking doesn't like stop. <laughs> like it just fucking like it goes like shit just keeps happening. Yeah. And like oh now there's like oh now this is happening. Oh now there's a fucking apocalypse. Oh now. And then. Fuck, Oh, not to spoil it, but the end was just like, why did you do this? It was the, we we have to be uncharted. It's like, fuck you. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to like, 
they're trying to like outdo Uncharted, but the way they're trying to outdo it is just with over the top action sequences, just fucking over like I, back to back to back to back. And I'm like, dude, this right. is crazy. <laughs> like, I and mean, then, it's cool. It's a cool ride, but like, man, and then just... someone got got into their tailpipe. We're like, no more of that. Just play the game. And it's like, fuck you. Yeah, it has a cool accessibility option where you can uh, you can toggle the native people because you're not you know you're in some like foreign like country where they don't they're not supposed to speak English. So there's an option in the settings where you can say, hey, the, I don't want them to speak English, so turn off this, make them speak in their native language. But um, Laura talks to them in English, and they talk back and they're like native. It's like they understand <clears throat> English, but you just said oh, it so that the, it's like <laughs> a one way thing. Like they don't go all the way with it and it's super weird. Um, like that app breaks the immersion even more. <laughs> like at yeah. That point. I think it's, I think it's even called an immersion option. Like, <laughs> but yeah, it's a cool I'm option. Saying, I'm just saying the ending of that game is bullshit. Yeah. It's a good game, but like, it's, it's like super over the top. Mm-hmm. Um, and the NBA 2K is NBA 2K, so. Basketball. Um, I mean, yeah. it's an NBA 2K game. I don't think there's really anything we can't say about it. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you like gambling. A lot. I do. Um, Xbox Games with Gold for July. Oh, man. Very slow news week, so this is what's happening. <laughs> yeah. uh, games with gold you get a WRC World Rally Championship 8 World Rally 8 I, I didn't know there was 7 of these <laughs> there's a shitload of rally games that Xbox just keeps giving away for some reason um, you're right there is a 7 but they, they all look the same yeah not a fan of rally <laughs> Yeah, um, I like Rally X though on the uh, on in the arcades. I've never played any of the rally games, and I don't think they're my cup of tea. <laughs> Some of them are pretty good, uh, but not. I don't and know I believe that you believe that, <laughs> but I don't believe I'm going to believe that. <laughs> well, they keep making the farming games every year. Someone's buying those. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm not against. So... The, I'm not saying, hey, let's start. Let's stop making the farming games. I'm saying people buy those. World Rally right. Championship that'll be available on Xbox One from July first to thirty first. Uh, Dunk Lords. Dunk Lords. I don't know what the fuck that is, but um. It I I, I like the name Dunk Lords. Is that what it's a video. basketball game? Uh, Dunk Lords that... available July sixteen to please August a... fifteen. Please be a basketball game. Please be a basketball game. I mean, it's I hope it's a basketball game. <laughs> Please let it be a water polo basketball game. It is. It looks like NBA Jam. Ooh. Is it a? Oh, I need a water polo basketball game. Um, Saints Row Two. Uh, Which Xbox 360. weird fucking game to be releasing for free in 2020? <laughs> yeah, that game, is but shit. You know, I I like that. I don't know what the numbers are for like how many people still have. Xbox 360s and are like using this uh, games of gold service, but I'm glad that they're still offering oh, it because PlayStation oh, di- isn't. Here's, yeah. here's the difference: all games with gold games are backwards compatible with with the Xbox One. So oh. every game you get, every game since this this came out, they're always compatible with the Xbox. So when they go like. So they're going to that catalog and going, all right, this game. All right, this game. See, that's cool. So it's not not a game that you can't play on your Xbox. There's not been a single one. of like, oh, how many people on the 360 play this? It doesn't matter. You're getting four games if you are on Xbox One. And I'm sure when... When the Xbox Series X is, you know, they'll stop the 360 games. They'll probably throw in a few here or there, but they'll probably go to here's your here's Xbox One games, here's Series X games. 
Yeah, I like see I like Xbox's commitment to the backwards compatibility. It's something that if if that's the thing you care about, PlayStation has been not uh reassuring on that subject. Um so I like that yeah. Xbox is dedicated to that. Because like I remember when PlayStation was doing it cuz I owned all three systems, a PS4, a PS3 and a Vita. Yeah. And I would get six games every month, you know, two for each system. Some right, of yeah. them were cross play between PS3 and Vita or PS4 and Vita. Also, the Vita got the best games of those lists because it didn't get like Uncharted. Like, there was like a list you could get literally at one time. Like, here's Vita games, here's this Uncharted game, here's Killzone, here's. Yeah, I, I got Uncharted, Killzone, um, God, what else? soul sacrifice within like a month of each other right and, and they kept yeah it was awesome like i did not i got all the main vita exclusives and i think the only one i had to pay for was like persona 4 golden but i got every single like vita game that was worth getting for free from playstation right it was awesome i still love my vita i don't give a fuck what anyone says i think it was a great system yep the Vita is a great system. Yeah, that's games for games with gold. If you got Xbox Live Gold, uh, enjoy. I see a lot of people were shitting on it, and I, I can see why. But at the same time, like, look at the quantity of games you guys are getting. Holy shit! Like, that's like I got for PlayStation. I got two games. You know, I got NBA Two K Twenty and uh, Tomb Raider. Well, Erica too, but I'm only gonna play. Let's be honest here. Out of those three, I'm only going to play Tomb Raider. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Whereas I mean, like, Pro 2 is a solid game, man. Saints Row 2 is a really good game. That's probably, like, one of my favorite Saints Rows. Yeah, and that Dunk Lords game looks cool. Like, that looks like NBA Jam. That looks like something you can play, you know, oh, as a dude's over. Dunk Lords! NBA Jam game, dude. I would fucking kill for a new NBA Jam game. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so, uh, updating Xbox Game Pass All with right, some new game. shit. Um, some of the, a, they said for X, they said for console and PC, but there's only one on PC here. Um, is it, is it the good one? No. Well, yeah, I mean, they're, I mean, they're all good. Uh, Yay! Nightfall, Night Calls coming to console on June 24th. Observation is coming to console and PC on June 25th. Um, this already happened, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these are already out. So Streets of Rogue is on console. Uh, Streets of Rogue is, a, is good. What the hell is awesome. that? Streets of Rogue is like, uh, how do I like explain it? It's hard to explain because it's not it's not like a traditional uh it's like imagine if gta was a roguelike <laughs> that's uh, like the best way to describe it it's a really, <laughs> like, weird game that's kind of hard to explain and he doesn't mean like the newer gta's like like the PS1 original gta yeah. yeah like overhead 2d gta like yeah, the it's, GTA. <laughs> it's hard to explain, but like you, you, you make a character and that character can have like any fucking number of traits. So you can be like, you could be a hacker, which will allow you to hack computers and like open secret like doors and shit or shut down security systems. Or you could be like a, a thief and you'll have like lock picks and shit like that. Um, there's just a shitload of traits you can have and you just go in and um, each level has like a goal that you have to you have to meet. Um, so it'll be like, hey, uh, hijack, uh, steal $30 worth of uh, valuables from any uh, pawn shop and you just have to do whatever the goal is and then escape. Um 
yeah, it's hard to explain, but it's fucking awesome. Like super deep. Mm. Uh, I will download that and I'm excited to see what that is. Yeah, download that. It's it's I, I got it when it came out on, on Steam. But I haven't played it in a while. I, I love it. Yeah, I do not have Game Pass. So it's not gonna work for me. Missing out. Good stuff. I should, there. dude. It's like it's like what, like five bucks a month, ten bucks a month. Yeah, like but they were they This wasn't. It's not in the. Uh, this is not in the the sale thing. But there's been sales going on a lot. There was a ultimate game pass three months for twenty five. So that's oh, literally one. That's literally they give you a month for for free. That's not so. bad. It was on Amazon, and it was you know I picked that up, so it was I think they're normally forty, and it was twenty five. So, but you don't need the ultimate because if you only have a PC, they just have a P they just have a PC only right. version. That's like five bucks. Yeah, if you only have PC, I I do it because I have I I still have the old fucking Xbox and. And I still want to the, uh, the messenger. Messenger is on game. Great console. game. Great game, messenger. Yeah, played it on PC. Uh, yeah, same. I got it free on the Epic Store a while ago, and I liked it a lot. It's really good. Everyone should play yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, it was free on the. Uh, it, it's on the Game Pass, so it's not like I'm like, oh no, I can't. Play. But I didn't know that game was not on the Xbox. So weird. It's still a solid game, though. I fucking I love the messenger. Like everyone should be playing that game. Absolutely. Um, and then uh, there's a bunch of trailers that came out, even more than I have listed in the doc. Um, uh, Rogue Legacy Two was announced. Rogue Legacy 2. Which, I liked the first Rogue Legacy, but it wasn't, like, great. You know what I mean? Like, it was another roguelike to me. It Well, at the, when, when this, when Rogue Legacy came out, it was kind of the first one to do the rogue thing. Yeah. Like, it wasn't, like, the, the whole rogue market wasn't as saturated as it was. It was doing, like, different shit, or how, how like... Every every character had like a, a trait and it had uh like a like a strength like a bad, and weakness. That we yeah, strength with. and weakness, yeah. Um Yeah, I, I still think this is one of the best, if not the best, like rogue platformers out there. Sounds good. Like the I'm watching the trailer for the new one and it looks pretty good, like it looks like there's more elements to like the combat and the platforming than there were in the first one. And it yeah. might be worth picking up. I might like it. Probably the end of this. I didn't even know all these trailers came out, dude. Like fuck. Marvel's yeah, Avengers. I mean, it, it, Marvel's Avengers. Like shit. It looks okay, <laughs> but it looks kind of generic <laughs> for me. Is my my problem. Um, that game. That- you want to know something? If if it if people didn't say that game looked like garbage, it'd be out in May. <laughs> You're not wrong. Like that's why Square Enix didn't release it because everyone said this game looks like garbage. It plays like garbage. This game's garbage. But like, we're sorry. One thing I am excited for though is uh, Bloodstained: Curse of the Moon Two, which if you haven't played Curse of the Moon yet, it's really good. I would argue better than Ritual of the Night. Really. Let's yeah, bold uh, statement there. It depends on what you like, though. Like Ritual of the Night was fine, but compared to like some of the best, like Metroidvania style games, I, I think my problem is it got spoiled by Metroidvania games because ever since like Castlevania stopped making them or uh, Konami stopped making them, yeah, you know the indie scene kind of came in and made some of the best Metroidvanias out there, man. Fucking. I mean, that game uh, is basically that game is basically Symphony of the Night, like through and through, even down to like the animations, like the the whole thing where you can jump, and attack, and then get another attack in when you land. Like it does all of that. Like it's Symphony of the Night to the T. 
It, it is, and it's to the detriment of the game, I think, in my opinion, because yeah. it feels, it doesn't feel new. To me, at least, it doesn't feel new. It feels too familiar. And this is going for yeah. someone who loves Castlevania. I've played through Symphony of the Night. I've played through uh, Circle of the Moon, Order of Ecclesia, Portrait of Ruin. Uh, the Sorrow games are okay. They weren't my favorite. I don't see why people like them so much. Order of Ecclesia is my personal favorite. And I got, I still got Symphony of the Night vibes from this one. And I just kept thinking, like, I'd rather be playing Symphony of the Night if I'm just going to play that game again. You know what I mean? Right. But where uh, Circle of the Moon, not Circle of the Moon, um, Curse of the Moon, it was trying to play more like the NES Castlevania games. Yeah. And it no had like fun little gimmicks that it felt like its own thing. And I liked it a lot. And I'm really excited to see this. That- this is the NES one they're they're making. Yeah. So when uh, Ritual of the Night was announced, they um, they contact they contacted uh, Inti Works, the uh, Gunvolt guys. All right. To make like a prequel to it called uh, Curse of the Moon, and it was supposed to be like in the style of like the NES Castlevania games. And it was. And, and canonically, it was supposed to be a sequel, but I guess some story stuff got changed. So like, oh, it's its own standalone, non-canon game now. And it looks like they're making a sequel to that, and it looks really fucking fun. Like, it looks like a lot of fun. And I, I like me some, like, old-school Castlevania platformers. So that's one, like, I'm definitely um, excited for. I know, I'm, I'm like... I, I know I'm, like, in the um, in the minority here for that, but... What can I say, man? I like weird shit. <laughs> I well, that have was weird always game. that was always my problem with the Castlevania or the uh, Metroidvania term, was that it's more Metroid than Vania, because like yeah. this shit is this shit is Castlevania to me, whereas like Symphony of the Night is not. That's not Castlevania. That's a fucking RPG. Um, like. The, like any difficulty in that game can be overcome by just leveling up. Yeah, I'm not. I don't hate Symphony of the Night. I really like it, but I just like those DS ones better. Those portable ones are great. Yeah, that's I like all I'm gonna say. Ones too, man. Like, uh, goddamn, like a uh, fucking. Yeah. Order of Ecclesia is like probably like my favorite Castlevania game. And it's yeah, I, I feel like when everyone talks about Castlevania, they always go to Symphony of the Night. And I get it. I really do. But in my mind, I'm like, Ecclesia, you're my girl. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. I agree with you so hard on that. It's such a good game. And I would love, honestly, I'd rather see like an Order of Ecclesia like sequel than like, like uh, a Bloodstained sequel, but that's just me. Right. I mean, you know, like, Portrait of Ruin was fantastic. Yeah, and then, like, a lot of people shit on it because of the multi, like, character mechanic. But I thought it was fucking dope. And I, like, the, the map was on the bottom screen, and you're on the top screen. I went like, this is how. This is what this screen was made for. Yeah, it felt incredible. Yes, I never I played that. those ones. Are those only on DS? DS. They're only on yeah. DS. But they are some of like the better Castlevania games. There, like my personal favorite is Order of Ecclesia because and that's the last one. Yeah, that's the last one they did, and it's and there's here's the gimmick to it. It's not one big map like the older games are. With this one, you have a hub world, and that hub world can take you to like different locations. So it's a bunch of little maps. But because they're not focusing on trying to make this big expansive map, just a bunch of like the biodomes you can go to they can focus more on the um, the level layout. So it feels like a good combination of like old school Castlevania and new school like open world Castlevania. It's a really, really good meld of it because you get this like exploration backtracking system that you have in the newer games with like the level design and tougher difficulty of the older games. Like you have to memorize boss patterns in this one. You can't just level up and tank through a fight. Like, you need to memorize boss patterns. You need to memorize uh, uh, enemy layouts so you know when to attack, when to dodge. It's so much fun. Okay. It is. It's a really good game. And it, it's 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 as close as, like, a perfect Castlevania game, I think, 
you can get to. Okay, it's the, so it's I'm not the Dark Souls of Castlevania. Don't fight. No, me. I will slap the fuck out of you. <laughs> it's not that hard. Just even just because it's hard doesn't mean like it's a Dark Souls game. Like Castlevania yeah. is hard, but you had to like pay attention. You have to pay, like you have to recognize enemy patterns where enemies are placed. It's not like impossible to get through. Just because it's hard doesn't mean it's like Dark Souls. If anything, Dark Souls is kind of Castlevania, if you want to be honest here. Yeah. Um, but it, it's a really fun game. It's my personal favorite, like newer Castlevania game. And like uh, like Raven said, it's the last one they made, and it's a really good note to go out on. It's fucking phenomenal. Yeah, it's the it's literally the last Castlevania game that was made, and it's sad. Oh. Yeah, before they went to like the Lords of Shadow games. Yeah, it's were, like okay. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad. It's just that was like the last of the Castlevania, you know, the the Metroid style games. Cuz they they brought them back for the DS and it was fantastic. Yeah, they were really good. I don't understand why people don't talk about those when they talk about Castlevania. It's beyond me. Yeah, it's weird cuz like don't get me wrong, Symphony of the Night's a good game. I played it. But compared to like, even like Portrait of Ruin or not Portrait of Ruin, even like um yeah Portrait of Ruin, like those those other games blow something out of the water. Like it's it's weird to me that something like is held in such a high regard and when the later games do it so much better. I and think it's the, just because it, it set the stage, you know, it, it set it set the it laid the foundation for those other games to build on. And I can understand that, but. They capitalize so hard in it, and it's yeah, which is weird to me because like I I get it, it set the stage for it, but you have to review, you have to rate the game on the standard that we have like twenty years of games after it. You know, you can't just review it in an echo chamber when other games did the same thing better. Like Symphony of the Night is probably my least favorite behind like the GBA game Circle of the Moon, which even then Circle of the Moon did some pretty cool shit that no one talks about anymore. Yeah, I, I'm just saying for anyone that's out there that wants, you know, that Castlevania stuff, you know, if you have a 3DS or work on that, fine. Do yourself a favor. Find those three games on DS. You will, you will be happy. Yeah, they're, they're solid games. If you can get all of them. Dawn of Sorrows, like, okay, it's too grindy for me. But yeah. Of- good um it's because with donna sorrow they have this weird like bounty system ecclesia and i'm oh, sorry i know i said that wrong uh and the first one are fucking fantastic yeah like he says. they're so good seriously go pick them up like if you if you if, if you played bloodstained and you liked it that's totally fine but i'm telling you these ds games do that better a lot better you right, more weapons, more mechanics. In my opinion, better art. I think the pixel art's way better than this like 3D art that they're doing here now. Don't get me wrong; it looks it looks better when they first announced what that art looked like. It looked like dog shit. It looked awful, and I liked that they tweaked it. They took some time to tweak it, make it look nicer. But it doesn't, in my opinion, doesn't hold a candle to like some of the pixel art that was in those older games. The pixel art's good. It's just one of those things you look at and you go, I'm glad they're they're still going on with these games. Someone has to. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's that's my that's my Castlevania rant there. You know, uh, Raven had his uh Raven had his Fortnite hour. I guess we can have our uh, Castlevania hour here. <laughs> no, no, you know, it takes two to can- tango, you know. <laughs> but no, uh, Curse of the Moon 2 looks good. I just, um, I just thought people didn't have the same love and affection for those DS games. Dude, I love the DS games. I could talk about those all day. Um, What's next on trailers? Oh, a new Cyberpunk trailer came out, which looks... Dude, every time I see something on Cyberpunk, I get more and more excited. Like, holy yeah. I am no, so it, stoked for that game. I, I, I have to tell you, and I, I don't feel this way about games often, when a publisher or a developer brings out a game that was like the witcher and everyone literally wanted to fuck Gerald until he died all those all all that you know i'm gonna this is the the only game that would push the witcher out of the side because normally people go witcher 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 and i'm like this looks amazing 
Dude, it ah, it looks good. It the looks only so game, good. It's the only game that I could think of like, yeah, I, I want this. Like, let's not like Oh man, it's the Witcher people. People are gonna be annoying. I'm like, I'm with you. I'll be annoying with you. And this is coming from our, our uh, resident contrarian here. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're so quick to like shit on games, but if you're excited for Cyberpunk, like that says something. Because I'm, I'm fucking, I'm excited for it too. Oh, everything I saw about that game, like, okay, this, this, it's they did everything right. <laughs> Like, there's not a game, it, like, for this, I'm like, okay, this looks like this is going to be a joy. It looks like it, you know, you have to play it to to know. But, yeah, you know, everything I look at, I go like, I fucking want this. Dude, I want it so bad. It, it's like the hot chick, in the, you know, like, The Witcher is the hot chick, everyone wants to bang. And people want to bang Cyberpunk, people go like, I want to fuck Geralt dry. I'm like, cool, you can have Geralt cool and i'm like oh this looks great like it you know if the game lives up to everything i think we need to kick skyrim in the ass tell it to go hit the brick go go home here's the thing that's got me excited for cyberpunk Go home. and this is coming from someone who's like a fan of like immersive sims that cyberpunk's kind of trying to pull that gameplay by giving you all these missions, multiple ways to complete them, multiple story options to get into these missions, and like a very expansive RPG system to play the game however you want. Like that's got me excited. I can't wait to play the game, beat it, and then start it over with a completely different like character. Right. And it just it feels like a game that and of course they're taking their time. They're tweaking things like the the first person shooting that we saw we never played it but it looks like they get it yeah dude it looks solid um the gangs on the game are really creative i really like the uh the factions in this game the character design's beautiful the world's beautiful like fuck there's so much to love about it yeah just that that first like gameplay thing they showed like it it had me a hell i'm like oh oh damn Oh, oh, dude! I was into it. Like that first gameplay video, oh. showed, I was into it. And at the end, oh. they're like, "Okay, we're gonna show you like a maxed out character, so you oh. can see like some of the cool shit you can do." Holy fuck, dude! I was, my mind was blown with just all and, the options you can do, the the combat mechanics, not just for shooting, but melee combat too, and the way they were jumping around from like in the in the from in the room from wall to wall. Oh, it was insane, dude! I can't wait to play this game. I'm just saying, it was one of those games that I'm actually going, oh, shit. They might actually do it. They actually might do it. Do what? They might actually pull this 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 shit off. I might not hate you anymore. <laughs> Oof. Did you, guys, did you guys hear that? Raven doesn't hate this game, so you should go play it. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, they Who's might praise? pull this off. They might pull this off. If they're crazy enough to pull it off, I will fucking make a tattoo on my chest saying Cyberpunk 27. I'm not. Because people would watch it and want it. But they have to pull it off first. So this next game, I don't really know about. Uh, Turnip Boy, Comic Turnip. Tax Evasion. I've uh, never heard of this game before. Uh... Is there going to be a special guest with Yoshi? You never heard of Tonic Boy commits tax evasion? Uh, I heard when Joker committed tax evasion. I heard when Wesley Snipes committed tax evasion. Yeah. Uh, I never heard I mean, of this either. It, it looks like a Zelda type game, but... And like, is this old not. school tax evasion? It has this... It's this really weird like game about like... It looks like this weird, like, 2D Zelda game with weird farming elements and some weird, like, backdrop of American taxes and the American tax system. Like, it's so weird. Just from the trailer, I'm like, I don't know the fuck. uh, Is this a game that was made in Japan, but they're going to follow the tax laws here? Like, it's so weird because, like, it, you, you grow, like, your weapons. Like, this guy just grew, like, a plant sword and, like, a plant bomb. And it looks like he's going through dungeons to fight people. 
But there's also a lot of comments about like the American tax system and how he's here to like dismantle it. <laughs> but it's, it's oh. weird. Yeah, but it's like this weird like like Zelda style world. Like it's not this is not in America at all. <laughs> so I don't know what this game is trying to like tell me. Yeah. But it's got me interested. I'll be honest, I'm interested in it. <laughs> and I do want to like check this out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Looks interesting. Don't know fucking shit about it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm into it, dude. I, I, I want to see what they do next. Uh, now, this is the next one I've never talked about, but I have been excited for this game. I've been following this game for a couple years now. Biomutant just got a new trailer, and I'm fucking stoked for it. So Biomutant is like this open world like character action game. Where you play as like this mutant rodent that you can customize from the beginning. And it looks really fucking cool. Like the world looks really interesting. The character designs are interesting. All the characters are like these weird, like anthropomorphic furry creatures, but the thing that you like that. Excited, I'm not a furry or anything, but I do like <laughs> the combat system because it is trying to do this like character action style combat. So like Bayonetta, Devil May Cry, which I've talked about before, is my shit. (laughs) I love me some character action games. Yeah. And with this game, you can customize your character to fight how you want to fight. And the game's open world, too. And you can mutate your character as you level up to do more things. Like, it looks fun as fuck, dude. Like, I've been following this game for a while, and I'm really excited to see that, that I'm seeing more gameplay of it. Like, I really, really want to play this game. I've been... Fo- I'm so excited for it. Um, Can we talk about op- the term open world for a second? Yeah. yeah. Because I feel like the, this that term gets used a lot. Because and- it does? But I, I don't feel like it never um, uh, equates to what I think that term should mean. Okay. Uh, like, well, pretty much, okay, like, Raven hates the game, but fucking Skyrim is, like, the, the epitome of open world to me. It's it's a game where as soon as fucking, as soon as you okay. finish with the... As soon as you finish the tutorial, you can literally literally walk in any fucking direction and get an adventure. And, like do whatever the fuck you want. Whereas like I've been playing RDR2 um, and that is that's not a game where like I can go in any direction, but there's like nothing there's nothing for me to get into in that direction. There's no will- there's no quests waiting for me out there, you know? There's nothing like can I'm I, not going to talk okay. to someone, and they're they're not going to go. Oh, hey, fucking Mister, I got so. I mean, there is random shit that happens, but it never like it's a, it's just random shit. It's not like oh, I yeah. found a fucking new triple barrel shotgun out here. Like it's just it's just random shit, you know. Uh, like to me, open world is you walk in this direction. There's fucking tons of shit out here to do. Uh, when I think of open world, I think of it like the rock star open world. Uh, oh. GTA. Uh, a lot of times, that's what they refer to, like, open map. You can drive anywhere, do it. Yeah, you but know, that's, like that well, that's what stuff. I'm saying. You can do that, but there's nothing out there. Like in GTA. Yeah, I, feel, I, I feel like a lot of times the open world concept was when GTA came out. was like, it's open world. Here's this world. You know? Well, when, I was a, when I was younger... You know, GTA first came out, people called it like a sandbox game was the term. And it was because, like, you know, you kind of made your own fun in it. The game had this world for you. And there are qu- missions you can take. Yeah, there's a story to follow. But for the most part, you can run around, make your own fun. And I think that's what separates. I think we need to bring that term sandbox back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Wasn't that what Odyssey was? Yes and no. You can argue Odyssey was more open world because you, like you can run in any direction and like run into like a challenge you can take on. Which which or Odyssey are we talking them. about? Super Mario? Yeah, or I'm talking about Mario. Yes, oh, okay. one. <laughs> um, 
Um, like, I don't know. Like, I, I just feel like there's nothing, like, as much as you want to shit on Skyrim, I, there's, nev- there's never been anything that's had that level of freedom where it's like, I'm going to walk in this direction. There's entire dungeons I can walk into and find loot and all kinds of shit and never touch the main story or talk to this random person in this inn. And he's like, my daughter got kidnapped. Go into this dungeon and, and rescue her. And then just this whole thing unfolds completely separate well, from, Witcher from anything. Does that, but you don't the like Witcher. Witcher, Witcher, yeah. Witcher does that. But I, I mean, yeah. I, I like Witcher. It's just the combat I'm not a huge fan of. But yeah, it does it does do that. But yeah, I, it's just not many games like they they tag this as open world, but they're not games you want to just wander around in because there's nothing to do a lot of the time. I hear you. Uh, yeah. Like the open world's like more of a setting and it's not so much like an active part of the fun, you know. Yeah. Like I, I said, I've been, I've been I've been playing I've been playing Red Dead. I've been playing Red yeah. Dead, dude. Like the game is phenomenal, but I it's just not the I world. don't feel like there's shit to do out there. Yeah, and I, I've got that review from it too, because a lot of people tell me it's just like that. It's it's an open world game in the sense that you're like physically moving from one mission to another. But yeah. other than that, it it might as well be a level based game. Yeah. Because there's a disconnect from the open world and like the missions and the fun you have in it. Yeah. Right. And even the missions I've been told once you play them, they're pretty linear. You like you can't like go about the missions how you want. You gotta follow the, the mission, the game the way the game lays it out for you. That's a yeah. lot of games though. But, I mean to an extent, like you could argue not Skyrim. like Skyrim. Yeah, you can argue Skyrim doesn't do that. As much as people like to shit on it, Metal Gear Solid Five doesn't do that. That's why I said a lot of games. It's they all. Like, like, that's one of my favorite things. I know, like, a lot of people should not, but Metal Gear Solid 5 was great because you had a mission, like, oh, go into this base and collect this person. And you can choose, I want to go in in the day or in the night. Do I want to go, like, bust in from this entrance, from the other entrance? You can, you can memorize, like, the guards' patterns. The guards had their own, like, schedule. Like, and I really, I wish more games did stuff like that. Like, it gave me a mission and I got to tackle it the way I want it to. Which is why I'm, like, super excited for Cyberpunk, because it looks like it's trying to do that. Yeah. But, back to Biomutant, it looks like fun. It yeah, says it's an open world game. Awesome. I haven't actually haven't right. seen much of this. Right? It looks fucking fun, dude. And, like... They say it's an open world game. I, I don't know how, how that relates to it. I don't know if it's like your definition of open world, if it's more like a sandbox style game where you're kind of just running around making your own fun. But the combat is what's got me into it because you have like this weird sword combat. Uh, there's different melee weapons you can use, there's different long range weapons you could use. The dude was using like magic randomly. Yeah, this guy oh, had like a whole technology. mech. He, he was piloting a mech yeah. and doing that. I'm like, Jesus, man. He was underwater and like fight, like in a octopus fighting shit. I was like, what the fuck? Dude, I'm telling you, this game looks dope as shit. Like, it looks awesome. I've been following this game for quite a number of years now when it first got announced. And I'm really excited to see this game happening and uh, to see more gameplay of it. And this gameplay trailer... Like, what was up with this clip, like, about, what is it, like, seven, eight minutes in, where he's, like, flying around and, like, shooting people and, like, launching them in the air with, like, weird rock towers? Like, it looks crazy. Yeah. Like, you literally play like, like <laughs> Almost looks like PSO2. But... <laughs> Well, just Yay, from, like, the sheer, from, like, the sheer amount of, like, ways you can, like, weapons you can use and different mechanics there are. Um... Like I am, yeah. I am excited for this game, and I, I it's really cool. This gameplay trailer looks awesome. I can't wait to play it. Uh, the character customization from the last trailer I saw was really good. You can customize uh, the way your character looks, their fur color. Uh, so if they have a scar, you can give them scars. It looks awesome. And fur color. Like get the furry, like furry shit aside. It looks. I know. Like it's just, it it does. I'm just saying, like just. The fur color is just hilarious. If anyone's a furry here, it's Raven. 
How, how dare you? <laughs> what makes how you do that? The, well, he's the brony. He's the My Little Pony guy. Yeah, but I'm not going to go out there and go like, hey, I'm not going to put a fursuit on and go, all right, love dogs. <laughs> I'll argue that every brony is like a furry, but not every furry is a brony. I only yeah. I own one Twilight Sparkle and a Vulpix. That is it. <laughs> I mean, as long as you're not having sex with them, I think it's okay. Nope, nope, nope. You can check them. You can uh, put a UV light. Fine. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> I'm just saying, some people. If you are having sex with them, that's like that's on you, man. I don't care. I, I know, it. but I'm just saying, if anyone wants to check them, we go like, all right, let's check for. Welcome to. Um, and less exciting news, we got a new Ghost of, so- of Tsushima uh, story trailer, which I- I'm kind of back and forth with it. The game looks like it's doing a lot of like really generic combat systems, you know, like like Assassin's Creed slash Arkham combat. Open world, but right? Also, like a huge slut for like old Japanese stuff. So I might pick it up eventually. And this story trailer didn't really tell me anything new or get me more excited for it. Like that Bio Mutant trailer we just saw, like it got me more excited to play the game. This new Ghost of Tsushima trailer didn't do anything for me. Bio Mutant does look cool though. It looks fucking awesome. And I'll probably end up picking Ghost of Tsushima eventually, but uh, we'll see what happens. I'll wait till the reviews come out. Um, you know, people are gonna shit. Are people gonna shit on this game? For if it when it's bad, uh, I feel like we're gonna shit on it even if it is good. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like there is no winning. The uh, I think people have turned the corner. I just, I just want win. like I'm, I'm a huge like I said I'm a huge slut for like feudal Japan stuff, dude. Like some of my favorite games are Onimusha, um, so I love stuff like that. Uh, I played Neo. It was okay. Uh, Sekiro looks good, but I'm not like a huge fan of like the Dark Souls combat system. I, I, I played Sekiro, uh, and I, I I wanted to die. Um, Ghost of Tsushima looks a little too generic for me, just from the gameplay I've seen. But I mean, maybe once it comes out and I pick it up, I'll end up loving it. But we'll see what happens. Um, one thing that tripped me out, and this is the next trailer here. Is this new Dying Light DLC, this Hell Raid DLC? So making content for that? Well, here's what's weird about it. One, it's fucking weird that Dying Light's getting another DLC expansion. Which is good. Uh, Nothing wrong with with a company making. Correct, but here's what's crazy about it. Uh, it it's like a whole like separate, like dungeon crawling, like medieval game and it looks fucking crazy but i don't know if you guys remember but that same company was working techland was working on a game called hell raid back in 2015 and it was supposed to be this game like i I could show you a trailer to hell raid back when that got announced that was supposed to be like coming out on the ps4 and this was announced way back in like 2015, 2014. And it looks like they repurposed these assets for this DLC, which is cool. Don't get me wrong. It's cool to see that this game is getting um, new life because it was like canceled. I don't know if it was officially canceled, but they kind of stopped talking about it. And it, it is cool to see that they're repurposing it for a Dying Light DLC. But it's so fucking weird, like, to see it happening. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, they basically put the Hell Raid game into Dying Light. That makes um, weird. Yeah, I got some of the old footage going here. It, may, it looks, yeah. Yeah, so like I don't know if you guys knew that, so I figured I'd bring it up in the. Uh, it's nice yeah. to see they repurposed it, but we'll yeah. see how how bad that looks. I mean, Hell Raid was a game that like I was kind of interested in. I was like, oh, the uh, 
because the Dying Light hadn't come out yet. I was like, oh, the Dead Island guys are working on like this weird first person hack and slash like zombie Viking game. Sign me up. And like the expansion doesn't cost that much. It's like what, like ten dollars for that expansion? Right. Um, I don't know how much it said it was. I'm just saying it's cool. Yeah, it does look really cool. And it's it's cool to see the game getting more support. Um, and it is cool to see them, like, repurposing this game now. Um, we'll have to wait and see, like, you know, what happens with it. You know, how the reviews come out. Because it came out already, right? Like, a couple days ago? Or like yeah, last game, the game's been out for a little bit. Um, so I'll have to wait and see like what reviews say about it. If there aren't already some reviews out there, but I mean, it might be cool. And it's cool to see that this game that I thought was canceled is getting repurposed. Now, if only Capcom can do the same thing with deep down, cause that's another one I was excited for that. Just, they stopped talking about deep down. It's probably a porno. There was a, <laughs> there was a rumor, not a rumor, but someone like some people noticed that they renewed the, uh, trademark for it. Dude, I've Deep down. heard so many rumors on it. I heard about the they renewed the trademark. I heard that it was supposed to be like they repurposed it as like a, a Dragon's Dogma spinoff. That never happened. Like this is another game that got announced. Like I think like when the PS4 came out, or before the PS4 came out, and, and I just then they anything on it yet. And then they said it was going to be free to play. Yeah. Was that... And then nothing came of it. Yeah. So we'll wait and see. I mean, maybe with Capcom. Capcom's doing so much stuff right now. They're doing a lot of stuff, right? So it'll be cool to see if they try to bring that back or repurpose it the same way Techland did with Hell Raid. Um, in other news, we got a trailer for the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 um, HD remaster. That's is it a remaster or a remake? Like, it's a remaster. It is a remaster. a remake. It's a remake. It's a remake. Okay. Yeah. Oh, like the Crash Bandicoot kind of things, but it it's gonna be good. Because they did make a Tony Hawk Pro Skater HD on like PS3 and 360. Yeah, that was a I remaster. Wanted... Yeah, but I, I and I also heard that was like total dog shit because it was missing. That one, that one was complete garbage. But this one, they're gonna go back and give it that Crash Bandicoot love style. They're gonna make love to it. We'll wait and see what they do with it. Um, I'm a pretty big fan of the Tony Hawk games. Like, I got into Tony Hawk, I want to say, with um, Underground 2. I was never a huge fan of the Pro Skater games. But it'll be cool to see. Sorry, I'm taking the dog out. It'll be cool to see if this game does well. I'll, I'll definitely pick it up because I, I love some Tony Hawk. Game's $40, but yeah, you're going to get all the DLC, and they got back most of this stuff, and Bob Burquist is in it again. Yeah. He's got to be ancient. I wonder if they got the girly from the uh, the original games back in it. Yes, there was, there was a really talented female skater. Who knew? In the 90s. And people didn't want to bang the fuck out of her. Everyone I mean, here. People still did, but... <laughs> Uh, Luigi, Dr. Mario. Uh, Dr. Mario, he, he's in there. <laughs> Real talk, if they did like a, re a release for it on Switch and they put a bunch of Nintendo characters in it, I fucking, I'd be all over it, dude. <laughs> like, uh, well, they always had like, they always had Goofy Kid. I, I have no doubt that uh, Crash is going to be in it. Yeah. Oh, it's uh, Spider Man, it's going to be Crash. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't they bring Spider-Man back for it? I mean, I know, like, THQ, like, doesn't own the rights to it, but you'd think Spider-Man, like, that might work out a deal to make Spider-Man, like, a PlayStation-exclusive, like, guest character. Oh, they really could. Like, that that's how the game I remember. And Spider-Man. Like, it's not, like, too outside the realm of pop. Yeah. But we'll, we'll have to wait and see what they do with it. Um, what else is coming? Oh, Azure, Stri Azure Striker Gunvolt 3 got a trailer. 
which full disclosure, I've never played any of the Azir Striker Gunvolt games. People I love guess the I series. Huh? People love the series, so yeah, um, and a lot of people talk about it, and I'm a big Mega Man X fan, and people told me like, oh, if you like Mega Man X, you'll like Azir Striker, so I might You try will. Okay. More like Mega Man uh Zero. I'm bad. I'm bad at Mega Man games, so I'm bad oh, at this dude, game. I'm, I'm dog shit at Mega Man games, but I still think they're fun. Uh, I fucking can go for Mega Man any time of the week. Now, unrelated game here. Azure Striker Gun Vault looks good. Don't get me wrong. It looks really good. But there's this game I've been following for about a year now. It's like a Mega Man style game but it's a 2d beat-em-up with some Mega Man elements it's called fiction sphere have you guys heard of it i have not nope. it looks fucking phenomenal um hold on let me try to find a trailer for it i can just, I can just okay. search it fiction sphere okay just found it i'm putting it in the uh, staff chat I got, I found, uh, I found some stuff. Azure Striker, the trailer reminded me of this. And this is one like I've been following for a little bit because it has this like Devil May Cry like character action, like gameplay system, but in a 2D plane. And it has this really cool like dynamic combo system where you can kind of just make up your own combos as you're playing, and it looks fucking awesome. This looks like Mega Man X. Yeah, but uh, gameplay though. And <laughs> yeah. that game's up my alley. Yeah, that game's up my alley because I fucking right. Ah, oh, it looks so good. <laughs> like it looks so good. And it has these weird like gallery shooter sections. Like um, what was that like Western like robot game that came out on the SNES? Wild Guns. It has this weird, like, wild guns, like, gallery shooting sections that, like, I'm into now. But the, the combat, like, looks awesome, dude. Like, the way the com the combos flow, the way how it tracks your combo meter, and you get you can get a score based on how well you're fighting. Like, as a Devil May Cry character action fan, like, that that speaks to me. That speaks to my soul, dude, and I am, I am into it. I am so into it. Uh, the Kickstarter, they matched their goal, I want to say, like, last year. So when they did it. And I don't remember. There hasn't been a release date for it yet, but I'm into it, dude. I really, really want this game. Yeah, they had, like, a $20,000 goal, and they hit $28,000. Uh, there's a demo out now. I didn't know there was a demo for it. I'm probably I'm gonna download that shit right now and play that once we're done here. Twenty thousand seems low. It seems like uh, they can. Yeah, it's low, but they're trying to hit what they can make. Also, like it's an ind independent game. You know, it's an independent sprite based game, so I can't imagine it costs that much to work to 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 make. It's. I, I, I'm sure most of that money is just going to manpower. You know what I mean? You'd be, you'd be surprised. Games are expensive, but... That's true. I, don't, I don't know dick about like making video games, so take my comments with a grain of salt. I, I'm just saying, like for them, I just hope they, uh, they scaled right when they said this. Like, oh, I'm into awesome. it. Dude. Right? It looks fucking awesome. And I hope it, it comes out, and I hope it is awesome. But, you know, Kickstarter's fucking burned me before, so we'll see what happens. Was it Kickstarter or was it them that burned you? That's fair. That's true. That is true. I'm so just saying, because I feel thing? like it's it's both sometimes, because there's a lot of Kickstarters, and you're investing into something. You hope that you see it come, come true. Yeah. And uh, we'll see. Um, Wooly from two best friends did like a, a look at the game and it looked that that's where I first heard of it. 
and I'm I'm into it, dude. Like I saw, I know I keep repeating myself, but fucking I'm into it. I want it so bad. No, I'm I'm all I'm for it. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah, there okay. were there were a lot of other trailers that came out, but um, like a lot more, but <laughs> those those were the ones that uh that I just saw off the bat. Well, trailers and things are still happening, even though we're now in the bark bark days of summer. Yeah. Well, is that? Oh, is that the releases or any of that? Um, yeah, some some shit's coming out. Stuff. Uh, not much. Not much. I mean, there's one very important game coming out. But that's uh. Oh. We'll get to that. Uh, the Legend of Heroes: Trials of Cold Steel Three is coming to Nintendo Switch today. Oh, that is um, def. That is a game that is for which- chiefs out there. I've I've never played any of the Trails of Cold Steel games, but I, I've heard good things about them. I hear the story is phenomenal, but yeah. I don't have time for that. Yeah, dude, same. There's like fucking three games. Each game is like what, like sixty hours long. I don't have time for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Little Town Hero is coming to PC today. Uh oh. Um, I think that was originally that that Switch game. Uh, yeah, Game Freak. Exactly. Which apparently uh, had great music because um, what's his name? God damn it, the guy who made Undertale. I can't believe I forgot his name already. Uh, Toby, Toby, Toby Fox. Fox. Yeah, Toby Fox did the music for it. So apparently the music's awesome. And is that all he does? Now? Okay. Well, he's working on like Delta Rune, which is Delta like Rune? this weird oh, yeah. like Undertale pseudo sequel. Not really. Toby Fox thing. No, Toby Fox earned his reputation. I'm not here to see it. Um, Little Town Hero coming to PC is pretty cool, but I mean, it didn't. It wasn't really that impressive on Switch. I doubt it's going to be that impressive on PC. So. Yeah. Um. Uh, tomorrow, Track Mania. Yes. Oh, the tire fire. <laughs> Well, tire I don't fire. know, man. There's no it could tire, be a tire fire. fire, or it could be a. Uh, well, wasn't there like a big issue because they were doing like this this uh, this like subscription system to get their content? Yeah, but it's yeah. also free to play. Like you don't have to buy yeah. anything unless you're like, I- I'm sure like the hardcore track mania motherfuckers know what like some of the shit means, but um, for like the casual player, you don't have to buy you can still play that game for free it's free to play yeah so like i i've never really played track mania but i i think a free to play option with like a subscription to get all the content is probably like a better business model for it, instead of like releasing dlc packs every like yeah. week well no i think all all you all you pay for is like if you want to make your own server then you have mm. to have like the subscription or if you want like it's like shit for like the hardcore people um it's not see yeah, that doesn't sound so bad like yeah and it's not even expensive it's like 20 bucks yeah. it's like 20 bucks a year for like the top tier or some shit like that see no that's not bad like i i know some people who pay more than that to like store their pokemon so oh yeah, yeah. it's ridiculous <laughs> Pokemon, our business. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Trackmania. I will be playing that tomorrow. Oh, yeah? I'll watch your, uh, I'll watch your stream, man. I want to see what it looks, I want to see what it looks like. Uh, and then Friday, July 3rd, Marvel's Iron Man VR for PS4. Which, like, if we can be, like, objective here. <laughs> that dog? <laughs> bad dog uh, if we can be objective here it we're only okay. just objective it looks okay it looks like they wasted money on dog shit like it looks like 
it looks like that uh, that Batman VR game they did a while ago, but with like a little bit more content. Yeah. I mean, Iron Man is like, for I'm not like a superhero fan, so a lot of the stuff I just don't follow. But um, like Iron Man seems like the thing you want to do. Like it's it's all hand shit. Like with Iron Man. Yeah. Um, like so, I feel like for for VR, it's like perfect. Um, but yeah, I but don't. I have got. It doesn't look. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, I know, like the hardcore Iron Man fans are gonna buy it, and the people with VR who like already finished Half Life, Alex, and need something new to play are probably gonna buy it. I don't know. The, those VR games are not setting this the world on fire. Like that Half Life, Alex, supposed to be the one. And I heard good things about Alex. I heard a lot of good things about Alex, but. I don't have a VR, so I can't fucking play it, and I'm pissed because every day I don't play that game, I get more and more sad. Um, all I hear about the game is the fucking wine bottle. The fucking wine bottle. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen anything. I just know that there's a wine bottle that's like the most impressive thing ever. Right. Well, yeah, Iron Man VR is coming out. It doesn't look great. <laughs> No, it, it really doesn't. If it is good, I'll eat my words, man, and I'll apologize. Which, by the way, I wanted to say, I know this has been a couple weeks, but I, 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 I am sorry for doubting you when you said Persona 4 Golden was coming out on Steam. Oh, yeah. I I, I told you. I said, I, I will bet any of like, it's happening. It is In my happening. defense, though, when you said it was coming out, you're like, oh, yeah, there are, like, leaks and, like, some Twitter upload. And I was like, dude, that's not, like, enough proof. <laughs> oh, I had I had enough proof to, to stake everything on it i wouldn't go that hard if it if it wasn't true i'll be like okay all right um i pass the threshold of like oh it's happening which is another game i picked up i forgot to talk about i did pick up persona 4 golden when that came out i got the digital deluxe edition because i love persona and i'm part of the problem and guess who was there when it got the problem guess who was there when it got announced the guy who's always everywhere greg miller He's yeah. everywhere. Well, Greg Miller is a Persona guy, I think, too. So, I fucking love me some Persona, dude. This is why, like, so this is why I'm such a huge advocate for used games back when, like, it was a better deal to get a game used. I bought Persona 4 Golden pre owned for my Vita back in, like, 2014, 2013. Mm-hmm. Since I bought that game, I have bought Shin Megami Tensei 4 and Apocalypse. I have bought Persona Q2, Persona 4 Dancing All Night, the Persona 4 Dancing Collection for PS4, Persona 5, Persona 5 Royal. I have bought so many games from and, Persona 4 Golden. And the and game is so right. <laughs> the game is going quite well on PC, and it's and I'm glad to be a part of that to yes. to boost that. You know, I'm like, oh, I gotta have this. It runs on toasters. I run this game on anything. Um, to an extent, um, I was reading a buddy of mine was having a problem with it, and I wanted to bring that up too. Uh, and I guess it's not, he's not the only one having a problem with it. I haven't had time to like research it, but I did find some other people having this issue too, where the animated cutscenes were really choppy. Hmm. For like no reason, but the game, yeah. the, the gameplay was solid. But I had, had that issue, like yeah, choppy, and I didn't have that issue, but my, a buddy of mine did, and I was reading online that a lot of people are having it. I promised him I'd look up a fix for it, but I haven't. I had a, I had an issue with that in one instance, and then it became fine. Yeah, with him, it's like consistently every time there's an animated cutscene the visuals and the audio get super choppy. But I'm I'm just saying I'm happy that game is out. Yes, I, me too. I love Persona 4. I never want to play that game again. <laughs> Why? It's, Explain it's, yourself. It's, it's it's great. It's just a fucking time but sink, man. Like, yeah, it is. It takes fucking forever. I think 
with my multiple playthroughs of Persona 4 Golden, because I played through it like two and a half times on Vita. I think I've dumped Jeez. a little over 300 hours on it. Jeez. Like, I loved Persona 4 Golden, dude, when I got it. Also, it came at the perfect time, because, like, I didn't have a job at the time. I saved up a ton of money. So I saved up a ton of money to go on a vacation that never happened. So I was like, Disney I'm just going to work for, like, about a month or two. <laughs> Disney World? No, so some friends of mine and I decided to make a trip for, like, California. Oh, I saved up, like, a little over two grand so we can go. So, like, if I yeah, they're all, they're like, bend and blow on the ship. It was supposed to be, like, a week, two-week long trip. And I saved up all this money to, like, pay for everything I needed. And my friends ended up canceling. And I was working a job I hated. So I was like, you know what? I'll just stop working for, like, two months. <laughs> I didn't have any bills to pay i was living at home with my parents and then june s came along you're like i'm saved and then i went and picked up persona 4 golden and i was like you know what i'm just gonna fucking play this and And uh well i got it when i was working part-time but i slowly quit my job after that i was just playing that for like two months that that became your that became your job you're like june s i love you dude i love persona 4 golden like i have strong Mm -hmm. memories of that game i fucking cried at the end you think you think they're gonna go back and do the police one persona 3 um if they do it's gonna be kind of weird which which version they play with because here's my thing i know a lot of people a lot of diehard fans are like it's not that big a problem we just suck at the game but i hate that i can't control my party members in persona 3 i hate it okay that's what kept me from playing persona 3 my first uh, experience with Persona 3 was Persona 3 Portable, which does let you control your party members. Okay. That, I was going to say, like, I don't remember that, but that, that was the only version I played. So. Same here. Now, Persona 3 Portable didn't have the uh, FES content, but that's the version I played because it let me control my party members. The original PS2 release didn't. So we're at this weird impasse where, like, which version are they going to... No, they're going to go with the... Uh, they're going to probably go with the PSP one, up Well, one. I thought it did. Like, you could play... What what was in that version that wasn't in the PSP version? So I thought, I thought so the, PSP the PSP had everything. No, the PSP version didn't have... Um, because in the original Persona 3, you could traverse the environment in 3D. They didn't do that. They had, like, a more visual novel-like system. It didn't have the animated cutscenes that were in the original PS2 release. And the PS2 release had an expansion called Persona 3 FES that added like an extra chapter that takes place after the game. You can't play that in the PSP version. But the, but the PSP, PSP version, version had like, you could play like the male yeah. or the female. Yeah. 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 So that's why they introduced that to kind of, because a lot of fans were pissed. Like, oh, I can't play the FES stuff. So Atlas was like, oh, well, we have a new character you can play as, too, with new social links. And a cool. character can possibly, like, minor spoilers, there's a character who dies in Persona 3, and if he plays a female, he cannot die. Which totally fucks up the game story arc, but whatever. Um, because the whole point of, like, Persona is, like, Persona 3's big theme is, like, death. And living your life as best you can because you don't know when you're going to die. And having this character that does die originally not die kind of fucks with that motif, but whatever. Um, so that that's why I'm like, which version are they going to do? Because both versions have like features that the other one doesn't. So if they do release yeah. it on Switch, which version are they going with? Or are they going to mm-hmm. remake a whole new game that has both those features? Which would be weird to see because I don't know how they're going to do that, but... Yeah, I was thinking they might do that. Like, it's been so long now that they could probably just do that. I mean, we'll, we'll have to wait and see what happens. Um, oh, but yeah, yeah. that I wouldn't have staked that kind of reputation if I didn't think it was happening. We, I, you know, I, I felt like it was basically a done deal. And you were right. And I'm sorry for doubting you. I'm happy also, that it happened. Also, another weird thing. Remember, we were talking about that Neo Geo collection. I'm like, yeah, that will be nice for a free game on Epic Game Store, and it happened. Yeah, the Samurai Showdown collection did happen, and I, I picked that shit up like that day. And it, that also happened.
happened. I was, yeah. I don't mean like that day. I meant later. Yeah, like later it happened. And I fucking, I downloaded that shit because I am a huge fan of Samurai Showdown. Yeah, I didn't mean like, oh, they should do that. Not literally, they were like, no release, free game. I'm like, okay, cool. All right, I guess yeah, later now. Really that game for free, like later that week. It was awesome. Um, yeah. My big hope, though, because if you look at Atlas' Steam page, they only have two games right now on Steam. It's Persona 4 Golden and uh, Catherine. Not the full-bodied edition or the full-body remake, but the original Catherine was ported to the to Steam. So yep. if this is like Atlas, like testing the waters, dude, I can't wait to see how they're, they're testing the waters. And I'm I'm happy that I mean I'm sure Sega and the rest of them were literally jumping up and down, going like, "Holy shit!" People bought this on PC, and we're like, "Yes, we wanted to play Persona on something." It also helps that Persona 4 Golden is only like 20 bucks. Like, oh, well, it was 20 bucks. It was, and also Wasabi was the one that pointed out that it was, it launched on Steam. Like, before they even announced it, it launched on Steam already. Yeah. Which is great to see. Like, so I like that this game came out. I like that it's an affordable price. I have talked this game up to everyone I could. Like, who doesn't have $20? You will get a fantastic. 100 plus hour jrpg that you are definitely gonna fall in love with like i think persona 4 golden is a masterpiece of a, of a jrpg blither 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 no nah, i i agree <laughs> and i'm i'm excited to have that game and the uh the the girl who is literally smarter than everyone else the june ass chick literally what are you talking about um uh, I'm talking about his his uh, I'm talking about the little one that Not- basically from the detective the yeah. yeah. Which she- by the way, fun fun like personal story. Nanako looks just like my little cousin, who I am very close to. So you gotta that so kind of when, me a little bit when I was playing. So it. when an so when anime conventions going to the Persona Three. <laughs> Junette, like, yeah, she's she's adorable. I just don't understand how how detective dude train her to be this complicit about things. Yeah, she just kind of deals with stuff. She's like, oh, you're not gonna be home later. I'm eight years old, but I guess I'll stay home alone and make dinner for myself. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, literally. Oh, yeah. Like, she's like, oh, uh, you want to help with the dishes? Oh, it's my school's this way. Oh, uh, I'm home all the time, I guess. Yeah, there's she's a like, scene like early on in the game where she's like, oh, it's about to rain. I better take the laundry in. Now I'm like, what the fuck? You're eight years old. Yeah, <laughs> that seemed like, oh. Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so bad. I just don't understand how this is, how this little girl had this much responsibility at that age. She will be a perfect wife for someone. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> don't say it like that. Not my Nanako. I don't want to think about her growing up. I don't want to think about her growing up, but if she has this this young and and the girl just wants to just sing the everything is Junez song. That's all she yeah. wants in life. At Junez, we have what you need and everyone's mad at it and like I hate this place. It's like Walmart. Also Nanako and Dojima probably have, like, the best, like, social link in that game, too. No spoilers, but it's it's a gr- really good social link. I'm just oh, saying. I want to play Persona 4 now. I don't know what I'm going to do after this. <laughs> I want to play Persona 4 again. I didn't get that far into it, but um, I'm enjoying going through the Persona lore and all that stuff. I, I enjoy the, uh, the eight-year-old that acts like she's 24. It's so good, dude. Like, I really love it, and I'm happy to see it on Steam. I can't wait. I want to see if Atlas releases maybe, like, some of their other games. Like, I want to see some uh, NFT games. They released Digital Devil Saga on Steam. Oh, my God. I, I think they should just go through the back catalog, and I know some people are like, they should do Persona 5. I, I guess. I mean, I feel like, you know, whatever. I'm not going to say they don't deserve or any of that stuff. It's like, okay, cool. But, you know, like this, I, I bought it because I wanted to play Persona 4. 
they I agree they should go through the back catalog, go through some of their older games because I mean they're going to be cheaper to port. They'll have a lower they'll have a lower uh, price on them when they do release, so people will be more inclined to buy them. Right, and a lot of people are starting to get into Persona, like people like three. I mean, port uh, that dancing game from the V that everyone hated. Just do it. Yeah, just do it. Just port all of it over. Oh, man. Party over here. Party over there. <laughs> all right. Uh, any uh, other news? Any other big releases? Oh, I'm no. Gonna... I, before you go, we have just a few minutes left. What do yeah. you think about Mixer dying? Oh, right. That happened. Um, I'm upset because I feel like Twitch itself has a monopoly on game streaming, and I don't like that. Twitch yeah. has a monopoly on streaming. Yeah, I mean, YouTube has the same thing with like peer sharing videos, and it bums me out that there's no competitor to YouTube. So it is sad to see like the only competitor to Twitch or attempt to be competitor to Twitch dying out. Yeah, and then uh, they were offered so much money on Facebook for Facebook gaming. Uh, I don't like Facebook gaming because I don't want my mom to know what I'm doing. I mean, Facebook gaming itself, just the interface isn't as good. It's kind of shitty. Well, if Microsoft's going to help them out with it, it, I'm sure when a few months later, that thing's going to be like, whoa, look, Facebook gaming. Yeah, I hope so. I, it is sad to see a competitor to Twitch dying because competition, honestly, competition makes everybody happy. Competition helps uh, everybody but the people competing. So I have good news. Tencent, the people that like Fortnite are going to make a streaming site called Brime. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that either, but they're going to give it a shot. They're working on a... Oh, we didn't talk about... Did you guys talk about this last week? The uh, weird like Pokemon MOBA that's coming out? Yeah, the that thing is, and then they were like, "I'm very excited." I was at I was at a doctor's appointment. They were like, "I was on the edge of my seat." Did you have fun with the game? It's coming out on Switch and mobile, and it, it just seems like the Pokemon company's like, I I don't know. And then you have the other news that people are freaking out is Nintendo looks like they're going out of mobile because uh. Animal Crossing sold well. I'm like, I don't think they're going out of mobile because Animal Crossing sold well. Maybe because they're happy with what they have. Yeah. I mean, we'll have to wait and see. Like, I'm not. I, I'd be lying if I said that uh, Pokemon MOBA looks good. I don't like MOBAs, but I mean, this mobile I, game is definitely. I mean, I'm not saying Nintendo had to sign off on it, but you know, this mobile game is here. Yeah. I mean, we'll wait and see. If the game's good, I'll eat my words, but we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. That's all I wanted to bounce off before that. Yeah, that's totally fine, man. Like, I mean, everybody listening, go check out Fiction Sphere. That, that's what I want to sign off with. Fiction Sphere looks great. There's a demo for it now. Go play it. Uh, any last words from you, Sabi? Um, you know, just check out Outer Wilds. It's like 15 bucks on Steam right now. One of the most profound experiences I've ever had in a video game ever. Um, yeah. The way you talk that game up, dude, it better not suck. <laughs> dude, I... Okay, look, here's the thing. It's, I don't know how it will affect you, but it <laughs> fucked me up. It fucked me up for months. I'm just, like dead serious. Dead oh, fucking... It, it had me thinking about life, death, uh, just like the the meaning of like, it just had me like religion. Like it just had me fucked up on like many different levels for months. Like I was having conversations with friends. Like, like what do you think about fucking like this shit? Like it, it just had me fucked up, man. And there's like nothing. All you do is just walk around and look at shit and read shit. But the the way the the messages it has just like on a psychological level which is just out of this fucking world. Like I've never been, it's never, there's never been any video game that's affected me in the way that that game has. I mean, and it's, it's getting, it's getting what it deserves. Like it's, it's gotten so many fucking uh, awards. Um, it got giant bombs game of the year. It got, you know, it's, it's getting, 
it's getting the credit it, it deserves now because it's on Steam now. Before it was just Epic Games exclusive, so people didn't want to fuck with it. But it's on Steam now. It's on sale. Yeah. Fucking get it. That's why I never fucked with it because the Epic Game Store. But if it's on Steam, it's on sale. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll fuck with it. I'll pick it up. It's it's incredible. Like I said, the most profound experience I've ever had in a video game. Also, buy dishwashers, three bucks. Yeah, buy dishwasher, it's three bucks. <laughs> buy the whole grenade. And vampires, actually, buy the whole thing for eight bucks. If you want to buy a sandwich, go buy go buy whatever Wasabi just said. You know, you'll be moved. You'll cry yourself to sleep at night. You'll probably come in the morning. Do that, too. All right. Eat virtual marshmallows because I fucking love eating virtual marshmallows. All right. This has been fun. Indeed. And, uh, that's Game Overse. And also, just keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, keep your hands to yourself. Wear, your, wear a fucking mask. <laughs> uh, sure, do that too. You know, just keep your hands to yourself. <laughs>